and welcome to the Free Cheese episode 195. I'm your Joe Dix, joined by Matt Sellner. Hello. The Free Cheese is a weekly video game podcast about video games. Brought to you once a week by thefreecheese.com. Matt, we have a lot to talk about tonight. Yes, we do. Nintendo stuff. Yes. Earnings. Games. New yes. New DSs. New Ooh. two DSs. Uh, but first... Sure. The Capitals are 0-2. Yeah, it's what the fuck's good. happening? <laughs> yeah, uh, they did not look good last n- or two nights ago, depending on when you're looking at this. However, tonight, yeah, I'm an optimist as much as I shouldn't be with this team. Mm. I'm an optimist. Mm. You guys got to take it one one game at a time. It's gonna be okay. Break it down even better than that. One period at a time. Oof. If you win three periods, you win the game. Th- that's all it takes. It's just you know not that's one. That's 20 period. minutes at a time. That's true. If you look at a 60 minutes, it's a lot. 20 minutes at a time, or you can break down even more. Win your shift. That's one minute, if that. Yeah. You're usually 40 seconds. You're not wrong. Win your shift. You win the game. Boom. They could still do it. Seven games, right? The only thing that's tricky is the next two games are in Pittsburgh. Mm. You would have won at least one on home turf. Well, you know. But. It's like they say, when you play far away, you're going to be okay. That, yeah, that's exactly what they say. I'm it's glad. A, uh, it's an old hockey saying. It's a Canadian term uh, from Winnipeg. Okay. Do they, to you is, by the, are they primarily English in Winnipeg, or is that more French? Uh, what's the difference? You know? Yeah. Why not? Right. It's, it's all the same. <laughs> it's all the same. Who knows? They actually name. might be English. That now, now that I think about it. I'm on. I don't know. They but, might be. I don't know. Don might be very ignorant. Eh. It's Canada. Yeah. How's Matt? Good. Besides, besides that, hockey, yeah. Yeah. It's, Orioles won a four and a half hour game today, so that's geez. something good. Long. Baseball can be very long. I would be the first to admit baseball would be really fucking boring. Yeah, it's pretty boring. And today was one of those days until the last hour of that game. When you're, If you're going to watch a baseball game on TV, you have something to do other than just watch that game, right? Oh, yeah. How do you think I'm playing all the, the Hearthstone when I'm playing? Got it, got it, got it. Okay. Because baseball was always the one just boring as shit until something happens. But then the rest of it, the only time baseball is fun to watch is when you're there. I you're love not going, really watching I love it. Going there. You're just there eating. You're watching it, but you're also like eating peanuts and hot dogs, and you know. I'm watching. I'm engaged. There's Every, just something play about, by play. There's something about being in that yard. I would say most of the time, yeah. But if you're there, you're having a conversation. Oh well, yeah, I'm talking to my sister and stuff. Mm-hmm. But like, it's usually about that that game or the last pitch. Or what's very convenient about where I sit for my season tickets. Yeah. We're in club level. We mm-hmm. have the luxury of there being a TV right there. Whenever it's a close play, we immediately look at the TV because they have the Masson broadcast, our local the, yeah, network yeah, yeah, affiliate, yeah. and we can see the replay right then and there. Mm. It's very nice come like instant replay time and stuff like that. And you can be in the stand shouting, he's safe, he's safe, it's okay. I mean, I'm all the way in left field, they but can I can try. You. Yeah, they'll hear you. I'm really, as we're talking about this, I'm like really craving, you buy them at the store, but it's bags of peanuts with the Orioles uh, logo on it that are just covered in salt. Like, I kind of want to stop recording right now, go to the store, like a pick up a couple bags. Pretty good. We might have to go do that. Okay. How about this? Yeah, I'm I got, I got an idea for a video now all of a sudden. Okay. I've been really digging this online play, as we'll get to as I'll talk about it ah. some more tonight. It's online play of baseball. Mm-hmm. You can just eat some fucking peanuts on the couch over there while I play some online baseball. What's the difference from being at Camden Yards? It really isn't because yeah. the graphical fidelity. Quite, oh, my God. Quite amazing in that game. You're not wrong. You are not wrong. I spilled coffee everywhere this morning. Okay. From the, the grounds. Pie, from the... the grounds. Oh, okay. That's not that terrible. The grounds all over the kitchen floor. You know what? I'm thinking the beans. Yeah, no, not no, the no, beans. The, the grounds. The grounds. That's, that's pretty bad. Uh-huh. That's pretty bad. <laughs> it was uh, the plastic container snapping the lid back on. Went to go snap said lid, and I was holding the container like an asshole. And I pushed, and it just... Mm, no lid that'll get you no cry and it uh, everywhere did you immediately uh mistaken them the grounds for ants and then start spraying it with your new home depot killer? i did not but holy shit the, this podcast has no ads and never will however that weed or weed killer the, that, <laughs> that bug killer that i bought from the home depot seven dollars 97 cents if you buy it online six dollars 97 cents oh damn don't know why anyway don't even know what it's called. It's a white bottle that with a red squeezer on the side. Just type in Ant Killer to Home Depot. Wow. Somebody at work told me about it. You were there. Yeah, I was endorsing it too because uh, I've had used at the house. 
Uh huh. For different reasons, still got the job done. It has fucked up everything. Like I just sprayed it a little bit, no ants. We were having like a solid like maybe ten ants per morning. You'd wake up, you'd go down and make coffee. You'd look, ant trail of ants just going to the. I've seen it. I, when I came football. in one day uh, from work at lunch. Yep. Yeah. Ants. Not overwhelming, but then no. one morning I woke up and it was fucking Ooh. overwhelming. Like it was a, it was way too many. And then I went out back and I looked and you could see them actually coming in. Cause normally you can never see where they're coming in from. No trail on the outside that day. Saw the trail said, fuck this. Whoa. Got that shit sprayed everywhere. Haven't seen a single motherfucker. They did. They started to divert. They left their normal path. They were on the counter, which I did not like mm. after the, after day one of spray get up there that night. Cleared everything off the kitchen countertop. Sprayed that. And sprayed everywhere out back. Like, I sprayed all the way to the backyard fence. You know what I would do next? You're alone. Besides setting the house on fire? Don't set the house on fire. Okay. As another precautionary step, mm-hmm. spray in the inside of your cabinets. Clear them out. Spray on that border. Ooh, that's a good idea. That's a good idea. I was not the one physically spraying, mm-hmm. but I saw my mom spraying around the house mm-hmm. when we were running mm-hmm. some issues. Yeah. Yeah. She was. She got every nook and cranny. It is impressive. I got to come down here in the basement and get it because apparently this thing keeps all pests away. No speeders. Yeah, no the now, bad ones. Spiders, I don't mind. You know, I don't. I'm, I'm not. I'm not against a good spider. A good spider is going to come in. He's going to clean up some shit for you. Yeah, he's going to eat you. See, you and Katie got that fear of spider bullshit. I don't want one crawling all over me. But I'll let him hang. Like, look, we got a little spider web right there, right in the corner. You won't look. I know you won't I'm look, not but I, look. But he's there. He's I'm okay. Pretend he's not there. He's just my little friend. He hangs out, and any of the other bugs that come around, he gets them. It's fine. I really don't like a good cockroach. I don't like. A, I well, I don't think I've ever had one. I feel I'm like just thinking like other like nastier bugs that there could be. Yeah, I've seen them when I used to work at a place that was for food, which is always good to have cockroaches. But um, to be fair, they were never in the food. Yeah. They were underneath. Whenever we'd move the refrigerated thing to mop, mm-hmm. you'd see them like dart down the drain. Mm. Real gross. Yeah. yeah, real gross. Yeah, they're not fun. Yeah. First thirty minutes of every Fallout game, I dread because you're usually scattered mm-hmm. with rat roaches in the vault. Yeah, usually cockroaches. I, I don't have a problem with in uh, Animal Crossing. Cause you run in, you stomp on them once. Oh, there's the cockroaches and out. So more reason not to play that game. If no, great reason to play that game. We'll talk about that later when we talk about mm, mm-hmm. some stuff. But the cockroaches in that game, very easy. It only happens if you don't play the game for a while, and when you're returning, some cockroaches have moved into your house because you weren't there you're to keep them out. It, yeah. You run in. All you have to do is just walk over them, and you see they splat, and a little cockroach ghost flies out of them. If you kill all of them in your house, you get a nice little jingle, and then it says, woohoo, I, I got rid of all the pests, which is what I said after I sprayed that shit all out back. <laughs> no more pests. But yeah, no, coffee grounds everywhere. Bad news. Not how you want to start your day, but a little vacuum, a little sweeping, a little whatever. Not bad. That's Not bad. probably worse than when you drop the grass in the house, right? The clump of grass. Uh, that was bullshit. <laughs> I'm calling bullshit on that fucking lawnmower. Fuck that. Yeah, that was because mm. I shook everything out. I was like, I'm cleaning this thing out before I carry it through the house and do the front yard. Grass everywhere. Yeah, so Joe was mowing the lawn out back. Yeah. Instead of walking around, which I don't blame him at all for not doing that, he went through the oh, house. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And uh, tried shaking out the lawnmower. I was here to witness this, so I was yes. very happy. As he was carrying it out, he was four feet from the front door. Not even. And I just hear a uh, patented Joe. Christmas shit <laughs> and uh, <All> classics, <laughs> some 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 yeah. something like that. And uh, I look over and I see a big clump of grass mm-hmm. in his living room, and that's what he happened. was not very happy because, about that. Uh, the only the alternative is you either walk like all the way up the alley either way, and then mm-hmm. all the way around the yeah. front, which I did the first day that I mowed the lawn like a year ago, and I went, no, fuck that, I'm gonna carry it through the through the house. Now the shitty bitch next door. She said, just use the yard. I'm No, I'm never going to take anything from her, ever. Like, because you give them one, they and just then they they keep never take, yeah. stop. Remember oh, that time never. you carried your lawnmower? She's the worst. I don't think I've ever hated anyone as much as I hate that woman. Oh, you probably have. No, nah, this one's bad. Not even Gannon? 
Nah, Gannon's all right. <laughs> I'll take Gannon any day. Because Gannon, at the end of the day, like, you know what he's there for. Like, he's just born to be evil and be an asshole. That one. From the way you describe her to me, I feel like that's the same, the same thing. <laughs> that's how it feels, but that's not her true purpose. I don't know what her true purpose is. Just to be a shitty fucking asshole. She's just an asshole. Every day. Every time you let the dogs out. Just gotta say some shitty shit about the dogs. They're your kids. You keep you don't say shit about uh-uh. your dogs. Uh-uh. Dogs bark. This is what they do. Yeah. They're born to bark and eat and fart and sleep. That's it. She's gonna get upset the dogs bark. And it'd be one thing, like her husband, best guy in the world. He just sits out back, he sunbathes, and you know, thinks about when, you know, the Grim Reaper's coming. That's it. That's the rest of his life. You know, maybe for him. occasionally tune into the radio in a little baseball game. That's, that's going to be me in like 40 years. Right. That's all. The guy's a little bit older than that. That's going to be me in 40 years. 40, 50, 50. Yeah. <laughs> that's it. He's, he's okay. When Earl comes out, he goes, Hey Earl. And he's friendly and, and like, that's it. And Earl's terrified of everything. So he just bark, 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 bark. But the guy says nothing. He says hi he to just him. Let's him do it. Yeah. She's out there. Stop it. Stop it. Stop it. I want to cut her. I hate, I hate. <laughs> it's like it's my kid. Leave him the fuck alone. And it's like, and Earl, the guy says hi to him. So then Earl will bark, and then he'll stop, and he'll go about his business and continue to shit or whatever he's doing in the backyard. Yeah, yeah. Her, like he forgets he's there. Right. Yeah. Because he was nice to him. Her snapping at him, pointing, and you know. Yeah. No. It's like being a bitch. Remember the old seasons of The Simpsons where like they really got creative with. Uh, how they animated things. Yeah. So like you'd have those episodes where like Bart was like, I don't know, imagining something and he'd imagine all the people to be like really big and scary. And like, that's what she looks like to Earl. <laughs> and I know, cause I've seen through his eyes the way that she, <laughs> I just like, fuck her. Like that's mm, her whole demeanor. Like, mm, she's just like a purple demon, but you don't even want to call her a demon. Cause she's not cool enough to be a demon. No, she's not cool enough. No. But it is. She's just. She's got that like. Ugh, ugh, ugh. It's a shame you can't blur her away like you can in Doom. With some metal know. ass music in the background and. Yeah. But then of... what's what's the alternative? That's the fucked up part. You know what I mean? As much as I hate her, at least I know what it is. I know how to control it. I put headphones in like the other day. Mowed the lawn. Mm-hmm. I started the mower before I even got out the back door. That way, there's no way, shape, or form she can try to say anything to me. Sorry, I can't hear you. The mower's running. Headphones in. You handle it a certain way. When I come home for lunch and she's out back gardening, or she doesn't garden, sorry. When she's staring at the lawn with her hands on her hips, making an agitated face because the sun's in her eyes, you just head down in, I, you know, I got the magic uh, door locks. So before I even get out of the car, yes. I've already unlocked the door. Mm-hmm. And then, boom, right inside. Don't talk to me. Leave me alone. Because it's always some shit. Yeah. Always. Are you going to... <laughs> God. You know, you really ought to... Fuck you. That's what it always is. <laughs> That's... Oof. Oof. On, a, on a better note, what have you been playing? I've been playing some games. <laughs> I've been playing some video games. Uh, I think the big one to talk about, for me, near Automata... I beat it again, second playthrough. I'm going to tell you, Matt. I'm going to tell you again, because I already told you this, but the listeners don't know this part. Okay. The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild is the best game this year, and Nier Automata is better. It is that good. Like, it's so good. So, I told you, you play through as 2B, you experience the story. Mm-hmm. You complete the game, you play through as 9S. 9S. Pretty similar story, but because they're kind of, you know, partners throughout the whole game, your second playthrough, you're really just kind of playing through it as him like seeing it from his perspective. It's different side of eyes, yeah. A little bit. Uh, you get a little yeah. more insight. You get whatever, but... It's like uh, if you were to go back through Resident Evil 2 with uh, Re- uh, Claire instead of uh, Leon. Sure. Yeah, same thing. Same story, same. but different things. You get different things yeah. along the way. Um, part of me was kind of like agitated in a way that it was so samey but by the time you get through it you kind of appreciate it because now suddenly you know everything like i know that map so intimately and i know every little pocket of it well at this point. not to keep you from going on but yeah. you said that it's, it's much shorter because you don't have to do all the same side quests again right 
Well, any side quests you did not complete the first time around are still there, are still there, ready to go. The ones you have completed, they you walk by those people and they already recognize you as if you had completed them okay. this playthrough. So, like you know, that ten hour playthrough I think you said a couple weeks ago or last right. week, what four or five hours of that? Eleven. It did end up. <laughs> yeah. So <laughs> what happened was the first playthrough about ten hours, and yeah, I told you last week I felt like I was getting close to the end after three. Um, I ended up spending about 11 hours before finishing it because I was exploring a little more. Oh, uh, okay. Getting to know the land and doing a lot more side quests than I had done the first time around. Because there was actually a lot of side quests in this game. Well, you said it yourself. This goes from action to RPG as fuck. Yeah, you play the demo and you're like, this is an action game. And then you play the game and you're like, this is an RPG with action elements to it. And yeah, it... um. Playing through the second time, I kind of, like, I found a lot more of the side quests. I did a lot more. Um, and I was also, like, trying to find more weapons and do different things. There's there's a lot of stuff hidden in this world that's really cool. But, yeah. Um, so, I played through with 9S. The ending to the 9S story, like, is really good. Where it's, like, it gets you right where you were, but goes a little bit further. And then... You start as you start the BB-8. Next yes, BB. Yeah. <laughs> um, your third playthrough, you play through as a character called BB-8. A A two, A one, six thoughts. You meet A two during your first playthrough uh, in a little part, and you kind of fight her for a second. Then she takes off. She says something very cryptic about uh, the people you are like not working for, but you know the associated with right. Um, and you're like, all right, something else is going on here. There's some weird shit in this society or, or, or whoever, uh, this group organization. Sounds very familiar to Mass Effect 2, but proceed. Uh, better than Mass Effect 2 because it's not Mass Effect. Um, I never played it. Mass either. Effect 2 I have, is the best I have, one. I have no – I've never played any of them. So go, on, no, go on. I'm go just on. being a dick just, for dick's nope, sake. Yep, keep, don't, yeah, yep. stabbing me in the heart right now. Keep I going. Know, I know. Keep going. Um – so the third playthrough starts off and you kind of pick up where you left off from the end of the 2B9S story. Um, you go a little bit into that and like shit gets kind of like, it's, what's cool is like, obviously you'd never start the game this way, but it feels like you're starting the sequel to the game that you just played, um, which is such a unique experience. Like I mean, I've never played a game like this before where you're like, you feel complete. Without buying it. What do you mean? Like, like a sequel to the game without buying, like a well, DLC. Yeah, like it definitely feels like I uncovered some secret or okay. I bought an expansion okay. a yeah. year later. Um, so yeah, on disc, you're saying. Right. Like this, this is weird to feel on disc. But even like, like honestly, this is this is the inverted castle moment all over again. You know what I mean? Where you're just like, you kind of knew going into it, right? Yeah. But like when I was a kid, played through Symphony, got all the way through Symphony, and I was like, man, this is a fun game. And then, like, you read somewhere on some message board or somebody tells you, like, yeah, the whole, you could, it's upside down, too. And and you're like, wait, what? And it's like, holy shit, there's a whole other game with a whole other, and that's exactly what this is, where you're like, you're done. Like, you get through the story and you're like, wow, what a weird cliffhanger. Like, whatever. But Mm -hmm. there is some, like, finality to the story. Like, you do things and and you, I won't give anything away because I really think. I want to get to it. I'm definitely getting to it. But there is some finality to it where, if you walked away, even if you walked away at the end of 2B's story, you could, you'd be you, okay. satisfied. You'd yeah. be like, this is a fun game. I had, I had a good time. Sci-fi is fuck. Let's, right. let's move on. Cool sci-fi, cool, weird, look into a future world, time to play the next thing. And then you don't, you play through with 9S and you're like, kind of the same. I know a lot more about this world, but cool, great. I got to play through a game that I loved as a different character. And then this is like, oh, the sequel came out. But it's like, nope, same game. And I still have three more playthroughs. <laughs> like, I have this one that I'm in the middle mm-hmm. of, and then two more after this, which I don't know how similar they are, right? Okay. But I know that there are 26 endings, and I know that there are five that are actually, like... Endings. Yeah. like Not the different... fast crawl at credits roll, and I hear explain last Yeah, week. yeah, not the, not the, the silly, silly ones. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, but so far, like... I, fuck. Yeah, this one starts off just like gets you right in the. Mm. It's good. It's good. You're just like 
Okay. All right. I'm playing as A2 now, I guess. And she cuts her hair. There's this moment. Britney Spears it? Not quite. Oh, okay. Um, but, like, you've seen what 2B looks like, right? Mm-hmm. She's got, like, a bob, so to speak. God, how can you not if you're in the game and read it? That's true. Point. Right. Yeah. Uh, but, yeah, her hair is, like, I don't know. It's not quite shoulder length. Maybe it hits her neck. Yeah. Yeah. A2's is just a little bit over shoulder length. Okay. Like, right when you, right before you gain control of her, there's a cut scene where she just grabs her sword off her back and just cuts all of her hair off. And she's got it up to about 2B length. Right. And then it just cuts to, boom, you're playing as A2. And that's kind of, I didn't go too much further than that. Like, I started running a little bit into the world, and that's kind of it. But, man. That's good. It's just. It, a lot of depth in that game, it seems like. Seems like it's a very masked 50 hour open world game. Yeah. I, but the, I don't know. It's a game that, like, right now, like, you just heard the noise that I made, where I just kind of did make noise that just breathed a little bit. And that's kind of where I feel about this game. Like, I don't really know what to say about it because i feel like i won't have the right words for it ever maybe i don't know and it's one of those games where like i don't think you you'll realize how special it is until like sometime after you know what i mean like it's one of those games where i'm trying to think of an example that happened to me like that like symphony is another example of that where you don't realize how much it impacts you until way after the fact. Like sometimes you might realize it immediately, but sometimes it doesn't happen until years after. But yeah, I can't think of another game like that. I mean, the first thing that kind of comes to mind to me, and this is just a personal thing. Yeah. It's something completely different. Like Super Mario World. Like you know, I was, no, I, I, what, honestly, before you just said that, I was thinking Super Mario. Like World. I, I played as a kid, not realizing like. This is this right. this is like the game of games. Yeah. And now like I appreciate the fact that I played it so much as a kid and I think it probably was a huge influence in what I'm doing today. Yeah. Yeah. You have those games that are just sort of like highlight hallmark moments where it's like it indirectly or or, or like consciously or unconsciously influences you and what you're doing. Inside and outside of playing games. Like it could be something that influences you just as a human being, like I don't know. I would argue that like Symphony of the Night kind of bends your curiosity a bit. So maybe playing through that at a young age, like knowing that there was some surprise that I hadn't known, like you start to look at things completely differently. Mm-hmm. And I think Bloodborne did that too, to an extent a few years back, like playing through Bloodborne, you're it's that like sense of surprise. Surprise is a big part of it. And like just discovery and, and whatever, but playing through Bloodborne where you, that was just so new. There's a, the, the, I can like pinpoint the moment in Bloodborne that it just the the whole game just changes into yeah. something, and it's that it could be it, it, in some cases it could take three hours, it could take ten minutes. Yeah. The gas coin, like oh, that's yeah. how you learn the game. Yeah, was yeah, that yeah. gas coin battle and was so clever. I think it was the the first gate when you first get around to that gate, that moment where you're just like. Uh, uh, like that aha moment that you just it clicks like I've said this before in the bo- in the podcast I knew that gate was coming because I had played enough of Demon Souls to get to that know first that that was, one yeah. where I came all the way back around to the very beginning I was like fuck this yeah. is cool and but getting there and like having that feeling you're like okay yeah everything is connected I kind of get this now and you go a little bit further and you start to piece things and it's like that world just keeps doing that on itself or just keeps turning inward, inward, inward until like you kind of, you have this big, but also really tiny collected world. Uh, yeah. I mean, that's the, like, I don't want this to be a Bloodborne podcast mm. all of a sudden, but like the lore in that game, you can twist and manipulate it kind of any way you wanted to yeah. and make it relate back to you or relate in any way you want to. I told you the first time I played through that game, I played through as if it were a sequel to Symphony of the Night. Like not literally, but yeah, like, but like, yeah, it felt like such a Castlevania game to me when I started I it. That. I jokingly or especially not, if you not started with a threat Cade. Right. I started that game and I was like, I'm gonna be Simon Belmont. Right, so I made my dude I made him look like me with a dumb beard, called him Simon Belmont. Four minutes in, it was like what well, not four minutes. It took me like two and a half hours to figure out how to get a weapon. <laughs> but a little while into the game, I'm like, Alright, I'm gonna get uh get the weapon. I got the threaded cane, uh and then another like six hours later when you realize how to transform the weapon, um, you're like Oh, oh shit, this shit. is a whip. This is Castlevania. Yep, this is <sighs> good stuff. But that that idea of like where you're just kind of like uh like you realize it it kind of comes together that 
I'm having a lot of that with Nier. And I, again, like, I didn't realize until I was at the end of Bloodborne. And then some, some things I didn't realize about Bloodborne until Ben was playing it or until you were playing it. And I was having conversations with both of you guys, just like reliving all of those things that I didn't even live through. Mm-hmm. But you're, you know what I mean? Like, that's what Nier is to me. Like, it's, it's so unique. It, I don't know. Like, I'm good. I'm like I'm. I'm excited to get in there I know, when I yeah. get in there. It's just uh, the backlog is shortening. It's well, true. We're getting there. It's we're, true. We're getting there. But yeah, like I Zelda was so great. Like I am. I'm still playing Zelda. Like I'm not going through. I'm getting shrines. I'm. I'm doing things. I'm trying to get all the armor and weapons. But something about near is better to me. I don't know why. And I didn't think I'd say that at all because Zelda is so good. But this is just better. To me. That's for me. No, that's weird, fine but... because I have the same thing with Horizon. I totally agree with you that Zelda probably mechanically is the better game. Yeah. And there's something about Horizon where I got lost in a world for probably about 40 some hours. It just clicks. And that, like, it, it can happen, but yeah. I usually try to balance one or two other games, and it uh, that game just shut it all out for me. I'm not saying that, yeah. like, this Horizon's this weird, near, like, lore and no, stuff. No, 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 moment, yeah, yeah, yeah. But, like it's just something about playing. He's getting grossed. Yeah, but something I was playing as um um, Aloy. Yeah. Just like, whew, man, that's a good, yeah. that's a good experience. I'm excited for you to play this. I think this is gonna be another Bloodborne for you. Where this you're... seems like something that's on my alley. It's just I need, I want to be in the mood for yeah, it. Yeah, no, I know, I know. You never did the demo, right? No. Mm-hmm. And I'm kind of glad I didn't. Honestly, because the demo because is the of first... what you've been saying. The demo is the opening of the game. That and the fact that it's like a teaser of it's more of a Bayonetta than a RPG. Right, right, right. And it's actually the other way around. So that yeah. I feel better about that. Yeah. But you'll play it either way. Oh, it's, yeah. It's the first moment. The I game. just, I need a, all the goddamn 40 hour games, man. I know. All of them. I know. Um, that was the big one. And that one, like, I, I know we're going to talk about some other things here in a minute, but like all the other things I, I kept feeling guilty playing it. Cause I was like, I need to get more out of, I need to go back to near. Like I need to, like, I'm really excited. Katie's going to, uh, uh Orlando for work. And I'm like, cool. Or is she going to universal studios and just lying to you? Uh, she, no, well, she's incorporating that into the trip trip. Very I think smart lady. Yeah. Yeah. She's she's a keeper. I know. But yeah, she, she'll be, away so i'm gonna be able to spend time just you know good job because that too like you you even though now like we've got two separate floors so it's not like me hijacking the tv to do something yeah i'm still like well i'm gonna leave you now and i'm gonna and i feel weird doing that so uh, yeah it never feels it's, great yeah, it's good like having the switch i can take the switch up the other night i did a little bit of near on the vita remote play don't recommend that as much as i you know uh loved doom remote play and felt it worked really, really well. See, I, I don't understand how you thought that worked well and this wouldn't. But it's, it's, I guess it maybe I had to see it to believe it. I think it. it's because on this, uh, like on Doom, they mapped the triggers. To the pad. It, it, it worked. Like everything made sense. This R2 is your sprint. And it's so on the pad. It's on the pad and you have to kind of reach in a weird way. But sprint is also your dodge. So in heavy combat situations, uh, yeah, it's nope. a flick of the wrist or the finger to to dodge out of the way. This you have to tap the back, and it just doesn't have that same fluidity. Because there's like a tiny bit of a delay on that touchpad. Yeah, just like the, the top yep. is, and then in that game, I can see that being an issue. And you can account for it. And honestly, like if one thing about the game does leave you wanting a little bit more, it is the combat. Um, because it after a while, you're just you're doing. I mean, not after a while, like pretty much immediately, you're mm-hmm. doing the same thing. You're just you're holding down R1 to uh, fire your weapon at someone, yeah. and then you're mashing square to hit a bunch of things that are near you. Mm-hmm. Occasionally, you hit triangle for a heavy attack, and then R2 to dodge out of the way. It's very repetitive. But, um, yeah, I don't, I don't, yeah, it's still, the game does something cool. Really cool. I can't wait. I mean, yeah, I I can wait because it's shit to play, but I will. It will be done before December. I will say it. I will say that. Now, Sandeep uh, was here last week and we talked about it, and he was like, "I could tell it was piquing his interest." Mm -hmm. I think you mentioned as much. I told him like, "Go try the demo." He texted me that night, said, "Got the demo. Holy shit! Think I'm gonna buy this game. Uh, Gotta finish the demo." I think it was the next night I saw him playing the demo. The next day, yeah, it was like 
the next night he had the he was playing the demo and then i think i saw like the like minutes after he was playing the demo it popped, it popped up in the up feed just... and it was just like sandy bought near and i was like oh shit and then <laughs> He texted me and was like, "Yeah, demo is really good. This game's really good. I bought, I bought it." And I was like, "Cool. Let me know what you think." And then he's been sending me a bunch of shit throughout the week of just like people talking about it, and whatever. And yes, it's. I'll get there. December is gonna be a real interesting time. In the I regions. got, I got one major game that's in the way of it before I can really consider playing it, and um, it's acronyms are me. MLB the. <laughs> A show, the E show, the <laughs> yeah, E the... sports. I see. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Um. Anything else? So yeah, other than <laughs> near, there were a few things that we may have also been playing together quite a bit. Um. Did a little bit of Puyo Puyo Tetris. The Switch Game of the Year 2017? Yeah, probably. Probably. Yeah, that game's real good. The adventure mode's real weird, but the... Uh, I, just don't even, I haven't gone back to that adventure mode since I yeah. launched it that first time. Yeah. I've cleared the first two levels. I actually yeah. really like playing online. Like, yeah, even I jumped if I'm getting in, my ass kicked two out of every three games. I, yeah, man, a lot of people are really good at this. Last night, I got paired up with this guy twice who had the benefit of the lag. And I, I feel like he was using some Game Shark hacks. It. No. I'm starting to get Poyo Poyo. Me too. Except for against that fucking guy because he had the. <laughs> yeah. Because I was like feeling really confident and then he would just dump like. What were you playing with Poyo Poyo or was it Fusion or was it Swap? So can you select, you can filter you can your filter. online. Yeah, I just had, I don't think I turned on filter. So it was just randomly throwing me into whatever every time, which is good because I was getting exposure yeah. to different things. Fusion sucks. I don't like Fusion. I'm if you So I'm getting Poyo Poyo. Fusion is making a little bit more sense. More and more. It seems so weird, but it. I, I'm starting to get it. I get it. I just don't. I I guess I'll, I'll I'll get there. Learn Poyo Poyo first. I okay. think that's the issue because it's primarily Poyo Poyo with some Tetris blocks. Okay, that makes. I more think sense. that's yeah. That's the thing that the roadblock. Because even I was like, oh, this good. is weird. Yeah, but hmm. yeah, did a little bit of Big Bang. Which, that's the the clutch. Are you clutch? Are you right. fast? And are you clutch? Uh, Big Bang. I don't. <sighs> that's when I discovered how like playing that game. Or what, like what controller? Oh, yeah, that, yeah, yeah. That yeah. was the one. I was like, yep. I yeah, keep. so oddly enough, I don't know if we mentioned on the pod. I don't think we did mention no, it on the podcast. No, because it just came out this yeah. week. Uh, the pro controller, not ideal for Puyo Puyo. Um, the D-pad is... Too big. Too big, and your thumb accidentally hits up quite a bit. Yes. Um, using the Joy-Con. I wonder if you can remap that. You can turn off uh, Quick Drop. I don't want to turn it off. I want to remap it because mm. quick drops important uh, ver- uh, versus like yeah. online. Yeah, I don't know. I don't think you can. I think it's always just been up. Mm. But yeah. yeah, that was like going into this. I was like, like I remember distinctively when they announced the switch and they showed it had a you know a separated D pad, and I was like, what, what? No, you can't do that. Tetris. When the, when a Tetris game comes out on this, you need that D pad, and mm-hmm. then. No, you don't. It's actually preferred not to have one in this game. It's weird. Um, I use um, – this is like the only time I'll probably use the grip, but I do the, the Joy-Con grip, and then I use the, the left buttons as my direct, as my D-pad. Yeah, it's that's my a, best success. It works way better than a D-pad on the Pro Controller. Um, but playing Raw Tetris, super good. It's Tetris. Playing Puyo Puyo, also good. Did we, yeah, so – I just said Big Bang, but didn't talk about what Big Bang is. Big Bang is basically you'll have a stack of Tetris lines. um, And you have a specific order of blocks coming up in your queue. So it's like all straight lines, and you have four sets of straight line holes. And you just need to quickly fill the hole with the straight line. It's as if you had already set up a perfect Tetris, but... It's set up for you. You just have to quickly execute. And it's a race. You're trying to beat the other person that has the same... Yeah, you're each running through the the same... Usually the same... Thing. and then whoever does gets, more boards 
get like there's like a health system and you knock the other yeah. person's health out yeah. weird but it, it works um a lot of ties I've, I've seen yeah yeah games can last a little too long for my liking yeah um did you play party what's party the one with the power up says no blocks. i didn't do that yeah oh that one sucks it's bad you can just turn that off right now okay you play online yep mm. So it's not the fact that the power-ups are there. It's the fact that that's the only multiplayer game mm-hmm. that relies on score and not messing up someone's board. And because of that, well, that would be fine if there was a penalty for messing up your side, like your board. Like if right. you got deducted so many points or if like you couldn't play for 30 seconds or something like that. Yeah. However, there's literally no penalty for messing up your board. And actually, it could work as an advantage because unless you restart from scratch, um. brand new board. Yes, you have to build it up, but if your board's really messed up, it yeah. might just be faster to stack, 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 clear your board, and then restart. Because huh. there's there was multiple games where I did not lose a board and the other person did, maybe mm. even twice, I think, one time, and they won because they played to Again, score, yeah. and I was playing like lines and fuck them, lines and fuck them. Yeah. And there's no way to do – that sucks. There's no way to do regular – like if you and I just went to a score attack – no. That I don't like. Oh, are there friend leaderboards, though? I don't know. Because, like, if you're just playing regular Tetris and it does keep track of your score, yeah. like, that could be incorporated in a friend leaderboard, but I have not looked for that. But I like, you know, classic head-to-head. Let's just, like, you know, if we fuck ourselves by not clearing yeah. lines quickly enough, then we're out. I wonder if they did that um, for, um, for time's sake because mm. that game could last like the, the way I'm seeing the way I've saw, I've seen you play this past week, yeah, I feel like I've gotten. I think I thought it was already kind of good at Tetris, but I feel mm-hmm. like I've gotten better in this past week. Yeah, like yeah, that yeah. that could last a long time, which is good. I think that'd be fun though. You know what I mean? It's like a that's a long game, but that's the way I've grown up playing Tetris. That's true. It's like that head to head. Like we're not sending garbage pieces over to one another to do. Like mm-hmm. it's it's more about like how good are you at this? Like. What you're looking for, you can do. Like it gives you your your best scores. I just I know what yeah. you're saying, where you just kind of want it head to head. Yeah, I don't know. And I'm I'm open to the poyo poyo like mix-ins and stuff like that. They're fun. The party mode sucks. I don't like Big Bang just because it uh, it's just not the essence of Tetris for me. I think with Big Bang that would be a good training mode for me, where I might dive in and just like work on my. Dexterity. That was a good training mode. That was yeah. the mode where I realized that D-pad on the Pro Controller is not Starting. meant for Tetris. Yeah, no. Mm-mm. Uh, then there's Fusion, which is the mix of the blocks, which I'm getting okay at, and I'm starting to open my mind up to it. You mm. don't like it. We played mm. it on our video that came out this week. Yeah, we did. We put up a, a now playing uh, Puyo Puyo Tetris. So, yeah, we play that a little bit. Swap Swap is my favorite. Swap. I, I, I like Swap a lot. Because it, it's literally like 30 seconds of Tetris, and then you switch the boards, and then it's 30 seconds of Puyo Puyo, and you yeah. keep switching and your board stays the same and uh, did you, have you messed with the combos yet what combos? so well, i don't know if you noticed this and i think it even tells you on the load one of the loading screens when they swap out that last piece that's fallen yeah will continue to yeah, fall. Yeah, yeah yeah so if you place it correctly and just let it fall your board on that's on your little one that you're not on will yeah. still keep clearing and will keep fucking the other their, person their at, background board or their current active board it will mess up their current active board. Nice. As you currently mess up your board with what you're playing. Oh, that's pretty good. So if you got a nice Tetris lined up, yeah, you yeah, got yeah. the big block right before. No, I did notice that last night online because right I like. Uh, something, I think I was in the middle of Tetris and I like cleared a line <clears throat> or was about to clear a line like right at the last second, and <clears throat> sorry, it was like I think I got a Tetris, was about to get another Tetris, it switched before I could drop the block in place, but it was already lined up to go. And when I switched back to Puyo, I had like a good chain mm-hmm. all ready to go like immediately. So it all kind of happened at once. And I just saw like, I didn't like look too, you know what I mean? Cause you take your eyes off too yeah. long. You're, you're done. Yeah. But I like saw a bunch of garbage fall into their Puyo board. And I was like, Ooh. well, what's nice is if, if forever, like the block's going to fall. Right. However, if the game is really good at recognizing, like if it did clear any lines, yeah. it, I saw it, it like the, block disappears and will go back into your queue that's the way it was before you actively let it go nice. so there's a nice little jedi mind trick yeah, to yeah, that yeah. that will really help you out if uh that's you're really tactic. skilled because yeah i was i kept like line up tetris tetrises and then like once i kind of realized oh five on the clock right. let me line up my skinny block on the side 
let me relax for mm. two seconds here, take a deep breath, Poyo Poyo comes, and then I'm like focused in on that, and then all of a sudden I see their board just get fucked. Hmm. That's a game. That's a really good game. And I'm glad it's – like I might eventually go through that adventure mode. I might. I'm not in a rush to do it. No, me neither. But just having Tetris – a really good Tetris too. It's been a while since yeah. there's been like a really good Tetris. It's a good Tetris. I would say I can mess up Tetris, but yeah, you can mess up Tetris. Go play the Ubisoft one. Yeah, you'll you'll. Uh, I've heard you'll learn. Even just like there was some shit in that that was like so counterintuitive. Like, it took me ten minutes to figure out how to play sitting side by side. Oh, like, nice. It just what the fuck? I don't know. The one good thing that the the Ubisoft Tetris did was uh, on PS4 as you were playing. Every time your piece changed, uh, the light bar changed color to match your falling piece. Oh, that's cool. That's clever. So yeah. your battery life on your DualShock 4 was about, what, one hour, right? About 30 minutes. Got yeah. it. No, no it, was, it was good. Um, then the other big one of the week, Mario Kart 8 Deluxe. Oh, the Switch which, game of the year 2017. That's correct. <laughs> yeah, I'm pretty sure you played a little bit of Mario Kart. Oh, we played a lot. Yeah. Well, we played a lot. We I played. Did. I continue to play a little bit more... Um, the following day, I did a couple of 100 yeah. CC courses between periods of the hockey game. Mm-mm-mm. Yeah. And then, yes. Remember, I said this is finally the game I can hand a controller to my sister. Uh huh. We did it and it's, jumped right in. Yeah. Uh, so there's a little piece of our couch mm-hmm. that folds down for like cup holders and stuff, and it's nice. kind of perfect if you put it in the middle. However, that screen's so fucking small. Right, I don't know. Right, Mark yeah. did say that uh, when you guys went to the event. Oh, yeah, and I told Or was that Splatoon? No, no, I used to have a Mario Kart. Kart. Very small, but yeah. it's doable. Yeah. Pop off the Joy-Cons. So Here you cool. go. I got it. We were playing. Did you attach and your Joy-Con straps? Yes, I did. Yeah. I, I didn't even tell my sister that was like a removable option. I just put it on. Popped I was like, on. Here you go. Yeah. I made sure they lined up. Nice. I nice, actually had nice. to take them out of the plastic bags. I never took them out yet. Oh, wow. Yeah. Huh. So, yeah, I strapped them on, get passed it over. It's like, all right. Uh, the right button is, is, yeah, right. is, uh, is the gas. If you need it, B is reverse. Yep. The t- left like bumper button up there. Item. Item. R, if you want to start getting into drifting, go for it. If not, you really don't need You'll to. Be all right. Decent. Yeah. She liked it? Yeah. Uh, she was a little blown away by the aesthetic. She's so used to like the SNES one. That's the one she kind of grew up uh, playing yeah, the most. Yeah, yeah. Like the hover, and I, like, there was one where we went underwater. I was like, "Don't worry, the water's good. Like you, you can <laughs> you go can underwater now." Yeah, okay, yeah. yeah, that's funny. Yeah, I was out in front of her about like a second or two, and uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, I went underwater. Oh yeah, you're gonna go underwater. Gonna, it's, yeah. fine, it's fine. It's fine. Yeah. Like, <laughs> I am sad. My brother was gonna come over and play, and then he got sidetracked with whatever before he had to be somewhere. So mm. He was like, I'll, "I'll leave early and stop by on my way, hang out for an hour." And I was like, "All right, cool." And he called me like. 30 minutes before he's supposed to be where he's supposed to be. He's like, yeah, it's not going to happen. It's like, ah, shit. All right. No, a lot of fun. She yeah. she seemed to enjoy it, too. I want to – I think one day I'm just going to move my dock downstairs. And yeah. we'll uh, or, uh, let's see, t- it's May 1st, so 18 days until you can buy the replacement – or, you know, not replacement, but a secondary dock, standalone dock. So I'll just move my dock from upstairs downstairs. I don't know why you would do that when you could spend $90 I and, will and get one – put one on each TV. No. You put one on each TV. In the I house. don't need their one in the living room. I'm lining up. When, when I need to play in the living room, it is in handheld, and That's it's right. perfectly fine. Yeah. My only fear is I'll be on vacation while that thing comes out, so I might need to give you some money so you can go to the local Toys R Us and pick one up. Let me tell you what. If I I'm not going one. through much effort to get that, if Amazon has it, I will buy it for you. I'm kidding. I'm not going to buy one of those fucking things. No, I'm, I don't know you, man. You you see a twenty dollar amiibo and honestly, your, your your dick gets hard, and I don't know if, what the hell is going if, on. If if I did not live, like if I still lived at home, I would probably do it, only because I would primarily when I was home, I would play games. Uh, at least in our last house, I'd play between the basement and my bedroom, so I might do it in that instance. Now, if I'm going to play the Switch not on the big TV, uh, I'm not going to plug it into the living room. I would just... It's handheld. Handheld. I love holding that thing handheld. Yeah. Unless, like, I don't know. I I can't think of a reason why I wouldn't just come down here. Or it's going to be so few and far between that you just move the dock upstairs. Right. Although I did just zip tie everything. 
Perfect. You didn't zip tie the dock. I zip tied the cables coming out of the dock into the back of everything else. The only th- the power, I believe, is the same power as the Wii U, right? Uh, no, it's USB C. Fuck you. <laughs> God damn it. Even better. Yeah, you're not wrong. Even better is USB C. Yeah, I just gotta grab an extra HDMI cable and a USB C. Yeah. And guess what? You probably already have an HDMI cable up there. I you just have some. In the back. Yep. Yeah. All right. Look at that. Not that hard. Fair, fair, fair. And to be fair, you just unplug the Wii all together and make more room back yeah. there, and you know, just dumps your fire. I'm about to fire up that Wii U pretty soon. Yeah, fire it up in a fire. No, 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 no. <laughs> uh, no. Melt I'm... that nice plastic of the cheap plastic. <sighs> In that Fisher Price toy that is the tablet. Yeah. I'm making it a point every podcast that I'm on. I love it. Call it a Fisher Price toy. It's a great system. It is a great plastic toy. You wouldn't have the Switch if you didn't have the Wii U. Which is a bad argument. That's true. You're right, though. You're right. I know, but it's also the equivalent of like. But. You wouldn't have cars if you never had. As a future Nintendo stockholder. Right. I'm very upset at the Wii U. Oh, no. The Wii U was great. The Wii U was growing pains. The Wii U was puberty. It was the cocoon that became... You should look at the... Uh, as someone who just looked at them, because I'm going to try my best to buy some Nintendo stock tomorrow. Yes. Uh, you should look at the, the previous like three years little like graph. Yeah. And how it does like a big U coming up at the very end of that graph. I know. And it's no coincidence that was around the time of the Switch. I know. And it fell from the time of the Wii. I'm not talking about sales. I know how the Wii U performed. I'm talking about the thing itself. Mm. You know? Yeah. Like, if you look at... Anyway, I'm not going to go into analogy land here. We get it. The Wii U was not a commercial success in the way that they probably hoped it it's would be. I think a console either. Oh, there's some fantastic games. You bite your tongue. Cool. Fantastic games. Yeah, like Castlevania Aria Sorrow. One of the greats. The Wii that was U, the only game I played uh, on it, so I can't. This. The Wii U was the perfect stepping stone to get to where we needed to be. Um, what controller did we all use when we play Smash? The GameCube controller. Oh, perfect. Yeah, so... My point exactly. We're probably going to end up using GameCube controllers on this thing, too. I mean, why not? Right? Like that's... But I feel a little bit better not holding that thing. Yeah. No, it was the Wii U was perfect. For the time. It was exactly what it needed to be. I will stand by that forever. Totally 100%. The listener can't see my face right now. But I know. it's an utter disbelief. But you you're smiling because you're kind of like. I'm smiling because what you just said is very inaccurate. <laughs> and very opinion based. No, facts. Real f- hot facts. That's all the free cheese is here to provide is the hot facts. Okay. The real deal things. So that's everything I played. Uh, Mario Kart 8 Deluxe, uh, which, funnily enough, Mario Kart 8 Deluxe, such a great game, started on the Wii U. Funny enough, mm. first time I played Mario mm. Kart 8 on the Switch. You played once. I on played the... once. See? So not Congratulations. The first time. Well, that doesn't mean the first time you played was on the Switch. That was... it means the first time it was on the Wii U. First actual Grand Prix by myself oh, on a Switch. Anyway, uh, what is cool about Mario Kart 8 Deluxe? Um, I thought, so I reviewed Mario Kart 8 on Wii U, I think I gave it a 4 back when it debuted, back in 2014. Uh, at the time, remember, we were about 6 months out from PS4 and Xbox One release. Correct. Uh, I argued in that review that this game looked far better than anything on either of those two platforms. Um, Nintendo knows how to optimize their hardware really well, and I think that that game looked Super, super fantastic back then. I have just recently found out that game was outputting at 720p. This, 1080p, 60 frames a second. Which, whoa. Like, I've never been that guy that that has to have 1080p, 60 frames per second. Obviously, I just talked about how a 720p game looked better than the stuff that was on PS4. But seeing this, like, the first time that we, you know, opened it up on the TV, like, it looks really good. Like, really, really, really good. And it only, like, the whole time we were playing, I kept saying to Matt, just like, imagine this game. E3 is going to be great. Like, I was just, like, thinking, because I'm seeing this for the first time, like, in this 1080p 60, and it's like, wait a second. 
what's going to happen when they're like Mario Odyssey? What's going to happen when Metroid inevitably... And it's weird because usually I have like, Joe, just calm your tits. But no, right. I was like, I was kind of giddy yeah, too. Like, this a is going to be good. Yeah. We're so close to E3. It's real close. Like a month away. A month like and a week. Five yeah. weeks. Mm -hmm. Five weeks. By this time next week, it'll only be four weeks. By the time after that, it'll only be three weeks. And the time after that... We're two weeks away from E3. <laughs> Just think about that. Somewhere, somehow, in this timeline. Don't rush it, man, because there's shit that's coming out that I need, I need I need to play things. I know. I need to play things before E3, especially for June 30th. Ooh. Mm. Ooh. Mm. Ooh. June 30th. Mm. What a day to be alive that yeah. day. Yeah, sure. We'll, we'll get to that. That's um, four weeks away. God damn it. <laughs> So uh, outside of Mario Kart, Puyo Puyo, unless you have anything else on those two, what else did you run uh, this week? I, I'm going to not get into this, but I have to say it on the air so I can see your awesome reaction. Hearthstone, climbing that ladder, as, I, as I've been doing here. I'm, I'm going to stop giving you anything. That way, maybe if I'm not reactive, you'll just stop. Anyway, I play some more Hearthstone, climbing that ladder like a, like a boss. Mm. Season ends today, though. Oh, well, yesterday, if you're yeah. listening, on Monday. So... Mm. Gotta get back on that grind again. Get back to where I was. So more Hearthstone yeah, coming to sure. you next Great. few weeks. Great. Awesome. Um, the next the major air. time killer for me was MLB The Show. Yeah. Then primarily, I've kind of abandoned the franchise and the uh, road to the show. Mm -hmm. I've been playing straight online. Really? I just playing a lot of innings hmm. and games online, and it's cool. And I thought like once I got to that like that wall where I'm actually like starting to play people that are good at the game, I would be encouraged to be like, ah, man, I should go back to franchise, just, you know, mess around. Yeah. No, I, I want to get better. Like, I want to, and I'm playing the Diamond Dynasty thing where, like, it's kind of like collecting trading cards and putting those players on the field. So, like, I'm trying to make, like, a team now that's optimized for a different lineup. Like, I'm actually, like, investing time in this so mode. Are you making your own team or you're just modifying the Orioles? No, it's my own team. Got it. From the now, I have a couple Orioles on the team that yeah. I like, uh, like, like Chris Davis, mm. or Crush, mm. hitting dongs, hitting dongs. That's all he's good for. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, like it, you essentially you get cars in different ways. Uh, for instance, I got the Griffey hard case. So I didn't mean for this to happen, but I'm kind of glad it did. Now I got like 20 standard packs mm. of like just cards nice. with that. So unlock them. I got a good amount of decent to good players. Okay. You earn packs just by pretty much playing. Okay. You, like, if you log in once every 10 days, you'll get a new pack. Mm. Uh, pretty much every time you sign in, you'll get a card. Usually not, like, the greatest cards, mm. but you can make use of them because of the cool daily matchup thing where depending... So I it's think actual baseball cards. Yeah. And it, this, that's... So, mm -hmm. like, this is cool, and this is something that's, like, a live and breathing team almost. Yeah. Like, in real life, say, for instance, Chris Davis, left-handed... Donger. Uh, batter. Donger. Uh, Left-handers are always just match up better against right-handers uh, pitching just because sure. of the angle the ball's coming at. It's easier to kind of see it. On those types of days where the starting pitcher in real life on that day that the Orioles are facing is a right-handed pitcher, Chris Davis might see a, a stat bump from his, like, 80 overall. Hmm. He, depending on his lifetime numbers against his pitcher, he might get a bump to an 81. He hmm. might even get a bump to 87. Ooh. And this goes for every player. And this is something that's constantly updated every day. So every day you log in, wow. your team looks new. It's the same players, but like yeah, your yeah, overalls yeah. are all over the place again. It's really cool. Yeah. Hmm. I wish more games did that. Yeah. Like this, this is like that ultimate team that EA Sports did hmm. that's not half assed. Hmm. And I just I, like the idea of like collecting cards. Like, Every day you're getting like a bonus. You're getting a reason to, to log in every day. And I, am and like, it's, I am like totally against buying like virtual like players for these types of teams things but man there are times where i'm like ah, i should i should throw yeah. five dollars and get like five packs and let's oh, see so what they do have that there better. is that but you can earn in-game currency by playing any mode yeah uh yeah there are ways of getting it. plus you're getting these cards all over the place like Got after it. you finish a game you will get a random card okay all right like there are you, you are in steady supply of the yeah. things you need, but you can give yourself a boost. Plus, there's also a marketplace where you can take this in-game currency, mm. and you can like sell your cards and get that to buy up. Or if you're looking uh, for a specific, a specific player, it's right. kind of like the stock market. Depending on how many there are, and you can buy high or low. It's That's very well cool. done. 
I don't know where or how that could work in another game franchise, but it should. Any any of EA Sports Ultimate Teams could do it easily. However, they won't. I'm thinking like outside of sports. Like, what's oh. a different way you could do? That? I I don't think there is a way. To, like, but I'm thinking some type of RPG game that uses that. Or, you, could. you know what I mean? Like, like a, like weather in the area. Because really, like playing MLB The Show, playing NBA, all of it is you're playing an RPG. Like you're it really you're is, playing yeah. an action RPG. Just you're grinding to boost stats. You're it's. Yeah, you're, you're building one. a team. You're building like, a yeah. team. You're building your, your... It's awesome. Yeah. Um, but yeah, the online thing just is... Now I got to the point where I'm playing... I'm, and I'm winning games still. It's not like I'm like losing every game now. I'm still like... I'm winning like two out of every three games now. Instead of like mm-hmm. three and three and three. Um, it's gotten to the point though where like if I mess up a pitch and I, yeah. I hang a slider in the middle of the zone, before it even leaves my hand, I just know I'm right. fucked. It's yep. gone. I'm at that level of player now where I make a mistake and I get I it no. hurts. That's impressive. <laughs> Sorry, dog. It's tornado. tornado. Yeah. <laughs> Whirlwind. Um Yeah, I'm uh, I'm very impressed with that hmm. that online st- structure. Uh, they did a patch to the online stuff and I feel like the lag has gotten a little bit more like noticeable. Yeah. I don't know mm. what they did in that patch, but it's still not affecting the actual gameplay parts of it. Like when I do my meter pitch, that's all yeah, regular. Yeah, yeah. It's only the parts where it doesn't matter, right? But like it'll get to home plate, and I've seen more stutters at home plate than before. Mm. And I'm hoping that the person on the other end is not getting that stutter. Yeah, and they they might get the stutter like while I'm winding up or something like right, that. Right, right, right. But uh, but yeah, I'm seeing weirder stutters like that. Mm. However, connection issues not prevalent. Not. It yeah. does make sense that it would be at home plate for you because maybe when the ball is hitting home plate. For you, obviously, they're swinging. Maybe it's just taking a minute for their swing it could, to yeah, like, ping it could. back to you. Yeah, and that's fine. Like if that's what it has to do to make it like fluent and work, but, yeah. like I, I get it. That's fine. Yeah, they'll yeah, get there. It's really good. I mean, they don't stop with this game. You know what I mean? Like, no, this is a living one. Game. They've already started work on next year's game, obviously. Mm-hmm. Um, but two, they have a team or part of the team is still working on this game actively. Yeah, and and you know with the online stuff, they're always doing different events. Right. There's a new challenge of the week every week that's like a batter first pitcher, like arcade style showdown. Like yeah. and that game is living and breathing in yeah. the best ways possible. Damn. It's super cool. And then super I do cool. have one more game. Mm. And uh this this is the biggie, and this is what this game is what led to me actually playing my Switch mm. more than my PlayStation for the first time in a in a week. In the course of a week, from podcast to podcast, I play my Nintendo Switch more than my PlayStation. Dang. That game was The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. Don't know if you've heard of it. I have. I know a game that's better than it, but this is a really <laughs> I know good a game, game that's better than it too. Oh, God damn it. Um Yeah, this it, I'm gonna stop for one that did you ever think you would say that? I played my Nintendo console more than my PlayStation console this week. I had a feeling there would be a game. I just didn't think it would be so soon. Like when Mario came out, when, mm. when Mario comes out, yeah, that would make sense. Like I'm ready to get back. Into but I mean, the like Mario think game. about a year ago where you were at. Oh, no. six months ago. Man, six months ago we. Six months ago, did we know what the Switch was? We did. Six months ago. Six as months of... ago, I started. But it was when I saw Skyrim on that Switch, and I was like, "Ooh, that's an interesting idea." Yeah, six months ago we did. Cause the six months ago would have been, uh, you know, right at the end of October, and we knew October twentieth. So and say the week before that, though, I was like, oh, "No, no, yeah, yeah. no, not a shit, not a shot." Mm. Yeah, no. So yeah, Breath of the Wild. A little the, bit further. What what I've been doing in this game really has pushed me to keep playing this game. And that's it's, good because I've been yelling at you for a while. Yeah, so stop doing the bullshit you're doing. No, but. the bullshit's fine. The bullshit's great. The bullshit's fantastic. Stupid. So uh, what I've done here is I've taken a modified approach. Mm-hmm. Well, usually when I get done playing, I'm at the beginning of that phase. Yes. And yeah. Yes. Now I'm going to stop at the there. end. Yep. Uh, so when I boot up, mm-hmm. I go for it. Yep. Right. And in. when I lose, yep. I'm like, all right, let's let's peel back. Let's explore the world. Yeah. And then I'll do that for an hour, two and you're just, hours. Are you going with any objective or just like, uh, I'm here, I'm going to run in this direction? Yeah, like I'll, I'll pull up like a side quest and I'll go to a yellow dot, but I'm not afraid to go if I see something bit. shiny over here, go yeah. that way. Mm-hmm. Or if I see a shrine, go for the shrine, whatever. Yeah. Um, and to that, mm-hmm. and this was actually on Friday. Yes. Because of that, I found a part of the map where mm-hmm. there's uh, something in a stone. There is something in a stone. 
I was like, "Ooh, that's shiny. Mm-hmm. Let me uh, let me go over and try to get that. Can't get that. I, I, yeah, you made it through. Uh, <laughs> still don't know that pattern. I still don't know what it did. Me neither. How to get there. Me neither. Perfect. I found a cheat for it. You can get on a horse, and the horse will just kind of go. <laughs> um, <laughs> I didn't know that. Unless Pretty they awesome. patch that out. But, yeah, I – no, I, I don't know. I kind of found a pattern, or at least what I thought was a pattern, that I'd get halfway through, and then it kicked me back out. Did you do any of the Korak trials? Uh, yeah, yeah, I did, yeah, I did them all. Yeah, I knocked that out. The one kind of decided, but I don't know. That's just for the quest. Oh, remember which one I'm talking about? I don't want to spoil it. The one where you have to follow? No, not the one where you're uh, where you're following. The one where you're actually exploring to find. Oh yeah, that one. They he, he tells you something. You're like, oh okay. But even then, I felt like it was still random. Still wasn't the right. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, so I decided, I was like, oh, that's a nice achievable goal. Yeah. Maybe work on that quest. Maybe mm-hmm. get that item. Mm-hmm. You're not far from that item, I'll tell you. Because you I'm told not. me. I'm not. Yes. Did more in that quest. Thought I was ready. Really thought I was ready. Huh. Go to it. Yep. Game over. <laughs> it's like, fuck. Oh, uh, yeah. It's like, that That sucks. Yeah. I'm pissed off. Mm. I'm going to go. I'm gonna go do my end game again. Mm. What? Why are you grinning? You beat him? I beat The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. You fuck, really? Mm-hmm. <laughs> How did you not tell me that? I did it earlier today. I was like, ah, I'll hold off on that. Holy what? Yep. You went all all the way through. All the way through. And that thing with the thing? Yep. Dang. Kinda kinda upset I missed an action shot. One the little screenshot. I did too. Oh, that. Yeah. yeah. Uh but I have a reason to go back. I still need to get that item. Still yeah, need to be yeah. two divine beasts. Mm. Let's do it again. You feel accomplished? Yeah. Mm. That's a tough boss battle. Without the item that you need? Yeah, I bet it is. <laughs> it. I, 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 we'll talk more about that I, off the air because yeah. I don't want to spoil it because there's something I want to ask you about it. But yeah, I, I like I. For those who have seen it, there's going to be a part. Uh huh. And it's hard. Like you don't like you, there's only so many windows and I I found a pattern to the windows. I'll just leave it like as vaguely as I can. They also do something not to, you know, like kind of we're not gonna go into specifics here at all. But just talking to you a little cryptically, they do something and being someone who's played Zelda games forever, you're like, Got it, I know what I do here. Let me just and then it doesn't work and you're like what the fuck? And you're like, all right, I guess I, I was off. Let me try it again. What the fuck? And it's a lot of mm-hmm. that. And then you're like, okay, I'm just going to brute. And I really felt the, I felt a little lackluster in that. Like, for me, I was just. That's a hard ass battle. Well, I guess without the proper item. Mm. Yeah, proper item. I mean, it helps a little bit just because it's a little bit stronger. But yeah. But yeah, it was a, uh, it was like the perfect switch moment. <laughs> I was playing docked upstairs, yeah. and then uh, my parents left. And sometimes my, when like no one's in the living room, my dog would just start barking randomly. Like, Fuck, I'm not dealing with this. So I yeah. picked it up, went downstairs. Yeah, um, I was playing the boss fight, and it was funny because my sister ended up coming downstairs, and she just she just kept hearing the same music like looping and looping. She's like, "What are you playing? You're not playing Mario Kart." I'm like, no, I'm I'm playing Zelda, and like I have to grind these boss battles. It, yeah, I'm at the end. I need to save things. I need to just take my time and just keep throwing bombs at someone. And she's like, oh, yeah. whatever. I don't, I, don't, I don't understand. I'm yep. like, okay, cool. Too much for me. I get to the end, and then, like, I realize, like, I'm at the end. Like, the, I, I have a pattern, and I, I think I got it. Yeah. I got plenty of health items. I got uh, Zora's Domain on my side oh, if, yeah, yeah, if yeah, I yeah, need yeah, it. Yeah, 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 I'm like, yeah. fuck, this is it. Uh, I'll be back. Yep. Put it back in the console. <laughs> got my pro controller. I was like, all right, here we go. Dang. And I beat the end. Dang. Yeah. Yeah. Do you feel like the wind's out of your sails at all? Or you're, like, eager to jump back in? I'm not going to jump back in right away. But See, that's where I, yeah, like, that, for me, but, I was. But I have, I have open things to do. See, you completed the main objectives. You got item. <sighs> you got, you finished beast. You did castle. I know. I didn't do all of the castle, though. Like, I only did a part of the castle. Like, oh, I w- I'm scared of the other parts of it. Like, I only had my specific path. Yeah, I, I, that's what I did. I found my way in, I found my way down, and then done. Um, but I, like, I don't know what else is in that castle. And I want to, but, yeah. 
Nah, I'm scared of all the, the, mm. the lion elves in there. Mm. They're yeah. okay now. I'm okay with them. I'm not. <laughs> they're still no. They're still like the most challenging part of the game. I think they're even more challenging than Ganon, probably. But I can see that. Yeah. yeah. Um. But yeah, no. I. Uh, hmm. It's it's over. I have a reason to go back to it when I get back to it. Mm-hmm. And it's nice because in that game you can get lost in what you were doing next. Yeah. The yeah, fact absolutely. that I just freshly beat it, I can mm-hmm. kind of like walk away from it. I'm still gonna continue to play my Switch because I got Puyo Puyo and Mario Kart. Sure. But now I can go back to exploring the galaxies. Mm. Get away from Hyrule for a little bit. Yeah. And I like. Effect. I know. I know. We kind of shit on Mass Effect a little bit, and I have been a little bit here. Mm. But I was watching uh, Twitch today. I was watching Summit play. Uh, player unknown's battle, uh, yeah, and he, yeah, he yeah, ran yeah. a he ran an ad. It was for Mass Effect, and I was like, "Holy shit, that's cinematic! Holy shit, that looks really good! Oh my god, I like, I love Mass Effect. Why am I shitting on this game without giving it a chance?" Yeah, so I, I, I because of that today, like I got reinvigorated. I, I'm like I'm looking forward to playing it now. That's good. That's a good thing. Um, I, I think it deserves that, but yeah, I, I think a lot of that early stuff was just like, "What the fuck?" Yeah, that was a lot of weird stuff. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, we'll see. Maybe in a week's time, you... you I come back and I sh- dive shit some, on here. <laughs> yeah, you put some time into it, but... Mm. Um, but no, that's uh, that was my week. Jeez. Uh, Capped I, off with a cherry on top. That's a, that's a big old cherry. Yeah. It's a hell of a cherry. Big old purple swirling cherry of death. <laughs> Power. Mm. I say uh, take a little break. We'll come back. A bit of show and tell. Um, a lot of Nintendo stuff. Show and tell. Yeah. No surprise there. Yeah. But fiscal things bring fiscal things, as they, yeah, say, as they say in Winnipeg. Uh, <laughs> cool. We'll be right back. year for nine ten door as well as a lot of other companies but yeah go on yeah you're right um but nintendo wrapped up their fiscal year uh at the end of the month <clears throat> now a month later they do this earnings call um which usually uh comes with a q a which i think we're probably at the time of the recording like a day away from getting which sucks because those are always fun to like read through all the yep. um, dumb questions um but we did have kind of like they, they always post their uh, presentation slides uh, that go over everything. So they talked a lot about um, Nintendo Switch, believe it or not. Shocker. Um, I know. Uh, Switch sold 2.74 million units uh, through the end of March. Shipped. Um and well, ship could be sold because you really can't find one in stores. Right, yeah, it's that's very, it's a very close number there. Um, one of the interesting things is they gave out an internet survey to consumers in the U.S. market who had linked a Nintendo account to their Nintendo Switch system after launch. Forty-six um, percent of people who bought the Switch between the ages of twenty-five and thirty-four. Um, the next biggest demographic was 19 to 24 at 23%, followed by 35 to 44, 15%. This one surprised me. 90% of consumers who purchased a Switch, male, 10% female. I'm not shocked by that. I am really shocked by that. That seems so high. Like, yes, I know, I know, but I feel like it'd be more like, 70 30 maybe i don't know aren't like i don't know i i just feel like like that that like that demographic there it, it's it's a loud and like no nah, i'm not saying like loud like like obnoxious demographic but i just think you know a loud vocal minority on the internet makes it scale like there are maybe actual more people like that i don't know I I, like and then plus it's like the first initial launch and this is a survey this is not like actual you know what data. though but thinking about it now that i'm thinking about it and i'm just having flashbacks the night we were in line there probably were nine dudes to every one <laughs> like think about it in that line man i'm thinking about all the good memories in that line 
so good. First memory that that asshole down the line, his girlfriend came up and got him like right like blankets or some shit like yeah. that. And he he turned from a real douche to like real like corny asshole. Yeah, yeah. And, oh, hey, thanks, babe. Hey, babe. God damn, he's probably looking for Call of Duty right now for the Switch. Oh god. And then the other one, remember the street cleaner that came by with that blown ass expression oh, on his shit. face? Oh shit! Yeah, that guy. can't get high. Yeah, exactly, exactly. <laughs> that one, I just thought about that the other night. I don't know why. I was like, Fuck that, that fucking cleaner was the best thing that happened all night. Yeah, he was pretty good. That was there. Somebody vaping? I hope so. There had to be. probably around the corner because that's yeah. where all the good stuff. All was the dirt happening. bags were at the end of the line. I think there were six packs of beer back there. Yes. There was a yep. lot of good stuff. Mm. <laughs> what a yeah. night. So, yeah, it, boy, it was a great night. But, yeah, I guess uh, 90 to 10, maybe it does make more sense than it. I don't know. Um, and once again, you have to remember, that's a survey. Did yeah. you get said survey? I did. I did the survey. I, I filled it out. I did not get said survey. Okay. So, so, yeah, it's not hitting everybody, which is, you know, fair. Um, but, yeah, Switch off to a great start. Um, they talked about the success of Breath of the Wild, which... Um, they state here that uh, about 90% of all consumers who purchased Switch also purchased Legend of Zelda, which is a crazy attach rate. Yeah, and there was, I know they're saying something else, but I thought I read a report where there was actually more copies of Breath of the Wild sold on Switch than actual Switch in the wild. I had read that. I, that was I, a poor I wonder, choice in words. No, no, no. I, know. <laughs> I had read that as well, but I wonder if that was like... Uh, copies of the game total including wii u but um this is saying by averaging our global sales numbers we know that close to 90 percent of all consumers who purchased nintendo switch also purchased this title which if you didn't buy zelda with the switch i don't know why you bought a switch well they followed up by talking about how one two switch really uh brought players together with the unique hd rumble feature all right yep i know number uh they did not give numbers on. I mean, they, I think they do have numbers somewhere. I think I closed that report. Oh, okay, all right, but okay. Maybe. I, um. Yeah, I don't know. Um. I just saw something. They talked about how strong third-party support was uh, at launch, and then moved into 3DS stuff. So, um, they talked about because uh, remember this is the fis- end of fiscal year, so going back a little bit. Talk about the upsurge in popularity of Pokemon after Pokemon Go um, and how Pokemon Sun and Pokemon Moon accelerated sales for both hardware and software um, brought more momentum to the business. Um, It's funny that they show a sell-through trend for um, 3DS systems. And if you look, uh, the first year, pretty low because they launched in March. It was a low whatever. Yeah. But year over year um there was a decline it started really really high and slowly kind of gets lower and lower and millions of units sold this march was the first march um where it actually went up so pretty interesting um let's see i'm sorry did you say that was for the switch or uh it's for 3ds for uh, 3ds 3ds Uh, same thing uh third part um sorry 3ds first party software sell through trends up again this fiscal year as opposed to previous uh it was i wonder why that was pokemon i mean they're at least they're at least pointing at pokemon as the big reason for that yeah um and it's funny because you can see if you look at the the transit but like the first march really low because that was when it launched a year later up obviously because it would be up the next march up because more units are in the wild the next one, which is the March just after Pokemon X and Pokemon Y, big jump. And then it slowly gets lower and lower. Mm-hmm. Now you get Pokemon Sun and Pokemon Moon, the first new Pokemon. It's the next generation of Pokemon games. Um, again, big jump. Um, let me zoom in scroll here. through this little press release. What press release are we looking at in case they want to look at it? Uh, so this is... Oh, the I got a title. It's financial results briefing for a fiscal year ending March 2017. There you go. Um, their Japanese website has a lot of this stuff translated into English, so you don't have to do the mm-hmm. work. Um, there, it, so, crazy shit here. 
Um, they gave some lifetime numbers for 3DS software and then showed how many units were shipped in March alone. Um, sorry. Mm. Sorry, sorry, sorry. This is number of, uh, number of units shipped during that year, which okay. Mario Kart 7 sold nearly 2 million units in the last year, which the game came out, I think, like 2012 um, on 3DS. You've, you're right on the you know cusp of Mario Kart 8 coming out for Switch. It, it's pretty impressive. Um, then they go into smart device stuff. Since Mitomo launched last year, um, they did launch Mitomo version two, uh, Mario Run on iOS, Fire Emblem Heroes, and Mario Run Android, and talked about the you know install base, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. They talked about what they expected um, Mario Run to do, um, and I think uh, Kimishima previously talked a little bit about it, but um, talked about how Super Mario Run kind of underperformed expectations. Um, it was installed on a hell of a lot of devices, but the attach rate of that in-app purchase mm-hmm. to unlock the full game, not as big as those who are playing Fire Emblem Heroes, which has seen a smaller number of downloads, but a much, much greater higher. profit, which is... Your free-to-play model. Yeah. That which... worked. <sighs> It is done right. It works. I know it works. I just that makes me hate humanity for being stupid. You know what I mean? I'm not. I never played this one, but if you've done a free to play game right, it works. Like you can do it. I like. I'm not against it. It, it sounds terrible and it sounds yeah. really grimy and disgusting. I'm. I'm no, not. I think Let It Die was a great example of it. Like Let It Die works. Yeah, really Yeah, exactly. Well. You yeah. yeah, you got hooked into know, it where you kept buying yourself back to life. Yeah. In a good way. Yeah, like like if it's done well, it I works. Know. It's an arcade game. But still, the idea that like, yo, you just give us 10 bucks, you got this whole game. Or, hey, we're going to give you the quarter machine mentality. Get you a little bit at a time. Which, yeah. You know. What I didn't like about the Super Mario Run, the fact that it was in-game, it was directly diverting the family share uh, as an Apple like uh, feature which I use on my family. And that would have been awesome if I just could have got it for all of our devices. But yeah, that was what it, it dodged. And I, first of all, I didn't really like the levels I played, to be completely honest. And I think I was yeah. very vocal about that yeah. at that time. But yeah. I don't, know. I, I don't know. I feel like that model, I mean, it's the same thing. Like It feels better, yeah. But I, yeah. like I said, never play Fire Emblem. But I, if a free-to-play model game is good, I'd rather play that than spend ten dollars on something that i didn't like to play yeah yeah um yeah, i'm just looking at rock i know like now you have to pay 30 bucks for rocket league but i look at rocket league that way yeah and i've dropped money in rocket league fair 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 uh a couple things like those are just fun numbers that are fun to talk about sometimes uh a little bit more numbers which i think are bullshit but nintendo states they are planning to ship 10 million units of Nintendo Switch between now and the end of fiscal year uh, ending in March 2018, bringing the total to 12.7 million units sold. I I call shenanigans on this. That seems way too low. Well, 10 million? Come I on, think, dude. I think that thing's going to be a hot ticket item at the holiday. Mm-hmm. And I think it's going to sell as many as they can produce or want to produce. Right. Want to produce might be the better word awesome. there. Uh, I'm trying to look at my little predictions because I have mm. something about that. Mm. Uh, but one thing they talk about in terms of like driving sales of the console is obviously the software. Um, first party titles, you've got a strong, healthy first year. And you really do. And that's something we've talked about before and something I kind of want to go into here is that the 3DS, the Wii U maybe launched with a good game um, or had some good games planned to come, but really struggled to get software in the hands of people who bought that console early on, the early adopters. And I think some might argue that, you know, between 
March and now it's been light um, because you really only got one big thing, but you got a big fucking thing. Like people are still, as you talked about earlier, playing Zelda and beating Zelda for the first time. Um, but just kind of looking over the next few months of things that they have announced, we had Zelda, we had one, two switch snipper clips. These are all first party things. Um, snipper clips is second party, but yeah, first party. exclusive, uh, Mario Kart eight deluxe, in June, we get ARMS, Splatoon 2 in July, and Mario Odyssey in winter, holiday, and Xenoblade Chronicles 2 by the end of the year. Breath of the Wild is going to have some uh, downloadable content coming in both in summer and winter. Okay. Sort of expand the life of that game. And with April, or with April, with Mario Kart 8, uh, ARMS, Splatoon 2, they're talking about how they're creating, um, they're encouraging social competitive gameplay um so throughout the summer you'll have people playing these games i feel good about switch i think we talked a little bit about this before but like the first year lineup is a lot healthier than previous years have been and that's just first party stuff and that's always been their problem is like i mean really uh, third party support has been a problem for a while that people like to lament but really first party support when they went to the Wii U and they went HD for the first time you saw a big like drop in, they struggled in to output. get things out of the it, door it was, it was a big challenge for them you, you can could... see that in Zelda yeah like the fact that I got delayed so much oh my god yeah Zelda was supposed to be out 2015 um, the first time they put a date on that I mean and... eventually it got delayed because it, it just made sense to put on a Switch at that point but right. yeah um, but there's it... an initial two probably yeah, I mean, it was that. I mean, look at, like, we did not get a, a traditional Mario like we would expect, like a Galaxy or something, because I think that they were, like, I think they took them a while to figure that shit out. I like a three-year-old. Three-year-old. Similar, but not quite there. Okay. Um, so, yeah, before, I mean, in the next year, I mean, like, I feel good about Switch. I feel good being a Switch owner. I, don't know I feel you. good with it being... Another platform for me, like yeah. By no means is this my primary way of, of playing things. It yeah. is. It's another option between this and my PS4. I don't think ever will be, but it, it, it could convince me. But like I've gotten to the point where, and it's funny because if you go back in time, listen to some old episodes of this podcast, I was very much like, "Fuck you, Nintendo. You guys fucked me." Because uh, you get the Wii. Wii was great, and then the Wii sat doing nothing for a really long time. Nothing came out for it. Um, the 3DS came out, and it was the same deal. The hardware felt like a step backwards. Like, the DS Lite was such a beautiful... And the DSi iterated on that, but they were, like, these really, really nice pieces of hardware that felt good to hold. And the 3DS was creaky, and the top of it wobbled. Mm -hmm. um, it just didn't... It didn't look right. It didn't have the same polish. The buttons weren't... They had this weird sponginess to them that weren't, like... It, it just didn't feel like a great piece of hardware. And it launched at 250 right next to the Vita at 250 and the Vita was a much more attractive piece of hardware. Granted, didn't have the games that the 3DS had, but it had the it had so much to it. Like in many ways the Vita kind of preceded the, the Switch in terms of being that like you know, like well, it could have been. Yeah, it was like there's there's parts of it there. There's like a, a flavor of it in the, in its DNA that we would later get with the Switch. Um yeah. When compared side by side, it was I was totally like, Vita, 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 fuck you, 3DS. Why would anyone buy a 3DS? Mm -hmm. Very vocal against it. Now look at um, it. Right. <laughs> right? I mean, like, but I've totally kind of balanced the scales a bit where I spend most of my time between the two, which I didn't think would happen, but they've totally come around. So to that end, I feel really good being, you know, between the two. Is this? Yeah. Like, I'm not, like, super up on ARMS anymore. Like, I was probably going into the Switch after mm -hmm. that Direct. But, like, mm -hmm. I'm still going to get it. Yeah. I'm going to play it. If I like it, great. If not, whatever. I think ARMS is going to be fun. Theater. But, yeah. Um, yeah it, it'll be fine. Uh, Splatoon, that's... I've said it time and time again. That was going to be the thing I bought the Switch for right, initially. Right. So, I'm super excited for that. Hopefully, there's some actual multiplayer aspects to it. Where I know I can join a party and match up with them, and you know maybe do a voice chat. Yeah, yeah. In the console, give it a, give it some time. Give it some time. Uh, so here's where things take a weird turn, because 
we all talked about the Switch becoming the next handheld because that's what it makes is. sense, right? Kind of. Um, There's a handheld mode. Right. Uh, and the games itself, like Mario Kart, you can play that Mario Kart anywhere you want to go now. I played it docked at your house. Haven't played it docked at my house yet. Right. Um, I played, what, three or four Grand Prix now. Yeah, and you, probably, my sister. you probably don't need to, right? Like, it's, I mean, mm. yeah, docked is great, but, like, you you could play it handheld totally. Um, compared that to Mario Kart 7 on the 3DS, like, it is a whole new world. So you'd think 3DS might be winding down. Obviously, they just had that direct, and they highlighted some things, um, but nope. Um, 3DS, they, they want to support that thing well into 2018. So much so, they're adding a new hardware model, Matt. Now, yeah. let's talk a little bit about brand confusion. And tell me if this name helps to kind of, you know, ease that confusion at all. But, but you know what? Let's go back to 2004. So 2004, we had the Nintendo DS. Okay. Which was followed by the Nintendo DS Lite. Okay. Makes sense. Later, the Nintendo DSi. Okay. Nintendo DSi XL. Okay. And you had your DS family. We then introduced the Nintendo 3DS. Now, question. Could all those yes. DSs play the same things? Yes, except the DSi removed the GBA slot. So you couldn't do... Backwards compatibility. Backwards compatibility. You could not do something like Guitar Hero that had... Fine. Um, right? Fine. But for any DS game, yes. Plus the DSi added um, the eShop, or, mm. or the early days of that. Um, wasn't eShop, but it was the DSi yeah. where where you had downloadable games. Um, there's your DSi family. Those four models: DS, DS Lite, DSi, DSi XL. The 3DS gets introduced 2011. Nintendo 3DS followed by Nintendo 3DS XL. Bigger screen. Bigger screen. Got it. The DSi XL was popular, so here we go mm-hmm. with this. Then you get the. New 3DS. The new? No, wait. Sorry. You had... It was 3DS, Nintendo 3DS, Nintendo 3DS XL, Nintendo 2DS, okay, which was your wedge, mm-hmm. followed by new Nintendo 3DS and new Nintendo 3DS XL. And that's kind of where you're like, this makes sense. We're good. Until today. Now we have, coming July 28th, New Nintendo 2DS XL, which I don't like because there's a horsepower bump in the new series. Yes, there? yes. I don't like the fact that they have to put they're using new as that. You know what's great about the new too, right? Which Matt is, I hope, in love with. Not only are they saying new, and that's the thing in front of it, um. The logo for the word new is surrounded it, it, by the amiibo colors, which I hope you noticed. And I've you never, didn't, actually, I don't think I've ever really like, paid attention to the logo. Is that it? Yeah. See? Same amiibo font, oh, same fuck. amiibo colors. Um, so the new Nintendo 3D, or the new Nintendo 2DS XL joins the 3DS family. Um, it is essentially the exact same thing as the new Nintendo 3DS XL, except. Um, no 3D. No 3D. Uh, so this one folds. This one folds. 150 bucks. Not terrible. Uh, in Japan, it will launch with a both a white orange model and a black blue model. U.S. is only, um, I think, in Europe's getting the orange one as well. The U.S. is only getting the black turquoise model. And. Mm. If I really wanted that white and orange one, I cannot import because they're region locked. Correct. These are region locked, unlike the Switch, which removed region locking. We all know. Yeah. It's true. Um, so they, they reiterate the fact that they've got Fire Emblem Heroes coming out May 19th. They've got Ever Oasis coming out July 13th. Hey, Pikmin uh, and some Kirby games coming out later this year. Um, plus uh, Metopia, Monster Hunter Stories, the Yoke Watch series, some third party stuff. They got a healthy um, 3DS family, you know, future ahead of them. My question is, what do you buy now, right? So you, literally, you have a Switch, Matt. Um, does the 2DS XL or the 3DS family interest you at all? Not anymore. 
Not anymore. Really, because I'm so in love with the handheld aspect of that Switch. Yeah. And despite, I mean, the one argument against it could be battery life. Sure. But I've never had a problem with battery life, like in the living room. Like, yeah, no. I'm fine if it, if if I'm in the living room for three hours playing, like I, I just watched an entire baseball game in three hours. That's that's the reason why I'm in the living room playing with it. Yeah, yeah. The only time I might now there is a. Ah, uh, well, that's not even the best example because it's only the Boston. So that's, what, an hour, hour and a half of that. But, like, a flight. Mm-hmm. I, I go into Boston to see Fenway Park for the first time in August this year. If it died on that flight, maybe I have different opinions on it. But, like, I uh, Yeah. Like, even still, I'm also honestly, bringing my Vita with me. <laughs> right. But, honestly, I, I'll tell you that the 3DS XL, I think, had an, a pretty impressive battery life. My new Nintendo 3DS battery life is not great. Like, it's fine, but it's not what it was mm-hmm. uh, on that XL. Like, my XL, I could leave on my desk for about 10 days, clamshell shut, um, and it would still have some juice in it to play some games. Now, let me ask this question. This is like, a, you know, the, the new 3DS regular, like, two, three days, and it's flashing red. Not touching it. Go ahead. Uh, the, the new... 3ds i do understand it has a bump in like processor and stuff like that so there are exclusive games for that correct there are there are very few very few okay what you do get is snes virtual console which is dope because that's some of the the best games right virtual console yeah um other than that like binding of isaac xenoblade chronicles Perfect. Okay, so that's about it. Um, but what, what's really cool is like think about something like Smash Brothers, which at this point, I mean, like I'm really anticipating them to announce Smash on Switch. Um, but if you are playing Smash on 3DS, the load times for the original 3DS were uh, they obnoxious. Yeah, sure. Um, this is like so fast in comparison, hmm. which you wouldn't really know had you not played it on the original. But playing it on the original 3DS. And now playing this, I'm like, I'm relieved every time I open it up. Um, it, it, but that fast is like that fastness is relative to to you. Like, I never like I did sit there like, okay, this is taking a while. But I didn't know what I didn't know. Now that I know, I can't go back. Obviously, but mm. but here's my thing: you do miss by not going here. You do miss this huge catalog of games that were fantastic all right do you have a list up no yes no if you don't that's fine uh i have some some games because i have a feeling there's some games you're about to read mm-hmm. and only like three may pique my interest i'll start with the big one animal crossing new leaf move on i said the same thing it was one of the first games I bought when I bought my 3DS. Did you I, say that where you expect to see something for Switch at E3? I hope to see something for Switch at E3. I'm really confident that. An and Animal I got the Crossing, cell phone game that's coming eventually. Yeah, so I'm not worried about it. Um, but this was. It, I would say like so. Here's a big thing. If Animal Crossing is on the fence for you, for anybody listening, where you're like, you know what, I might buy one of these things just for Animal Crossing. I would totally support that if we weren't right about at E3. Um, I think this is like a fun game to lose yourself in. However, with E3 on the horizon, I would wait. If they don't announce one at E3, go buy one, play New Leaf, love it for the next two years. Like you will spend some time in this game. But if they announce one for Switch, there's really no, no point in going. Back. Also, keep in mind, 2018 is the mobile version coming. Is it 2018 or this year? I thought it got pushed to the next year. I, it got pushed to the next fiscal year. But uh, I, yeah. that's right, fiscal. It should fiscal. Still be this year. All right, well then, yeah. But who knows what that mobile game is, right? Like free to play. <laughs> they done right. Um, Luigi's Mansion Two, another great one. Okay. Uh, you had your Mario Kart Seven, but again, you got Mario. Kart I got 8. Mario Kart Eight. Um, you got your Box Boy Trilogy. That, that's the one I, I keep thinking of. And there's one other game that you probably won't name on this list, but I'll I'll tell you when when I'm done. Um, or when you're done, you've got the remakes of. Uh, Majora's Mask and Ocarina of Time, which really are something special. Um, there's a whole like line of Nintendo Selects that are pretty good. Um, what are you thinking of that I'm missing? There's something about that Mario Golf game. 
You, yeah. And I feel I feel like at this point I missed the curve on all everyone playing at the same time for scores and stuff like that. But like I don't know, there's something. No, you're something about a good Mario Golf game. You are right. Appeals to me. Mario Golf is really really good. Um, I played the demo only, but yeah. Um, Oh, Matt, there's a Mario Party Island Tour. Oh, fuck you. I know. Um, there's two, three, four Fire Emblem games on this console. Just really good. Aren't Fire Emblem games coming to Switch before the end of the year? Next year. Well, next year. Okay, I, I, can, I can wait. I'll wait long enough to play a Fire Emblem game. I know, but still. Um, oh, wait. Let me see where I where I progressed to. In Pokemon's the... huge. I, I burned myself out. Well, it's Pokemon last year, but Pokemon's a really big one. Oh, um, booting up my Fire Emblem game. Oh, this is where I'm at. I got the Septal User Agreement. <laughs> uh, you got your Bravely Default and Bravely Second. Both really, really great RPGs. I've heard good things about I'm just like, I'm trying to like build a case. Like, my favorite thing to do is, because this right now, this, this 2DS XL, new 2DS XL, is the Game Boy Micro, right? Where you're coming in. Well, after this thing has seen its heyday, there's still some games on the way out, but you're really kind of done at this point. And you can come in, you can fucking clean house. You can get this, you can get the system for relatively inexpensive price. And you come in, you have, it's no waiting. Like, part of the problem with a lot of Nintendo in the last decade has been the waiting. You're like, okay, I got a Wii U. I really want something, but I gotta wait. I gotta wait. Where's that Mario Kart? Where's that Mario? Where's that Zelda? Dude, right now you're walking into one of these. Like, I would, I'd almost be really happy if I were, like, on the outside of things where I don't, I'm not counting down the days to something. If I could be the kid right now getting one of these for my birthday. And, like, my birthday's in July. You tell me, like, hey, here's a couple games. No, you can't play them yet, but a couple weeks you can get this cool thing. Like, I'd have a good rest of my summer knowing I'd have this cool. 2ds and all of this shit i mean part of the problem with that is um i don't like particular I mean, it's just me i'm sure there's plenty of people that like this but you play an rpg on a mobile device an mm. rpg is something i feel like i should get invested in like story wise huh. and character wise and stuff like that and I, just, I just don't feel that same investment on a mobile platform see i always liked rpgs on like something especially the 3ds where i could dive in Play a bunch of it, and as I'm grinding, I can just I gotta go. Cool, clamshell, carry on. Like I get the grinding part of it. Like yeah. that's awesome, just to take care of that. Like when you're like on a car ride or you know, like break at work or whatever. But yeah. I like when when I'm ready to play that RPG, I want to be in it because RPGs usually have these epic stories. I just don't feel the same attachment rate to the characters and stuff. That's fair. Well, and like uh, like my living room chair. Hmm baseball game in the background that i'm like half listening to see i I told you i've also changed in the last few years uh as part of this cohabitation where my reliance on handheld things has increased significantly um so i've adapted a little bit in that regard now it's part of the problem i think with me and zelda was i had every opportunity in the world to play that guy handheld yeah and it felt it felt like it deserved to be docked to get that full epic experience but if I got docked, like my PlayStation Four is right next to my dock, true. And Horizon Zero Dawn is on that on that PlayStation, and also that's true. A f- fucking amazing game. Yeah. So that's what happened to me there. I can see myself with that stuff happening. Like Mario Kart's though, perfect. That's like 15 minutes Grand Prix. Jump get in. Get my three star trophy. Move on. Yeah. Ooh. Play Cross 3D round two. There's some good like. This is the part where, like, I would be, I'd be stoked coming into it, but I don't know. Um, other than that, uh, I, I don't know. I feel like if if you got the money, you're in a good spot picking up anything. Like, it's a great catalog. Money. I just don't think the catalogs for what I like to play. Yeah. Or at least it's not the place where I like to play those things. True. Going into this year. We've also got uh, – they, they wrapped up with a little bit of the, the smart device business. Um, they reiterate the fact that the three goals of the smart device business for Nintendo is to maximize the number of people who have access to Nintendo IP or intellectual property, uh, to make the smart device business profitable on its own, 
and create to create synergy with dedicated video game system business. That part I love. Um, and that was something that interested me really early on. And I think I wrote a piece about it a while back, like when they first announced the partnership with DNA, um, where essentially what I thought would be cool is you play Mario 3D World. And in it, you have these Captain Toad treasure tracker levels, these little puzzle things, as you did. Mm -hmm. Um, At the time, right, their answer to that was, oh, people like those mini games? Cool. Let's spin it out into its own Wii U game and call it Treasure Tracker. What I feel like they could do or might do with smart device stuff is, oh, you like those mini games in that? Great. We're going to make an iPad version of it. You can play it. You can love it. Great. If you like that, playing through that is going to unlock something. Some in-game content for you. Back in the other one mm-hmm. and back and forth and back and forth. And I feel like that's the way to go where if you're playing, if you're signed in with your Nintendo account on um, both platforms, you play through Breath of the Wild, it's going to send a thing to your um, Mitomo app to give you a dumb shirt that says, but I played through Breath of the Wild, whatever it is, right? But we've yet to really see that synergy take place. Like there's little pieces that hand off, but nothing really in that way. And I'd like I would to love to see, see more of that. And then this is kind of going to the, come kind of a little of the full circle here. The way you're saying about Puyo Puyo Tetris about going head to head with one, one another. Like, yeah. Like if you had like an alert in Puyo Puyo where it was like, Hey, your friend just beat your score in Tetris. Ooh. Go. Yeah. You ready to go against them? You're like, Oh fuck. Let me go get my switch or my, you know, the, the switch on Puyo Puyo, but like something yeah. like that, like even like the 3DS, or like kind of go next level, like you know, if we if you are correct about or you're 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 right, not right, but like your your dream comes true, and there's a, a Animal Crossing on Switch at E3, mm. Mm. that mobile app is like a little bit like um, I don't know, like not like the just it's some kind of grinding like on the go to make like your, that is exactly what i want like, like that's why i hope like, that I game got delayed i'm kind of relating this game back to harvest moon so i'm like thinking like grinding get your crops ready to go but um probably mm. not right i know i understand that but yeah like something like that see that was what was interesting is the when they updated newly for 3ds um with the welcome amiibo update something they talked about or they they'd like that got added were these mobile homes, which the mobile homes come by by way of scanning Amiibo. But when they first announced the mobile homes and not, and didn't say anything about how they were getting there, it was like, oh, pfft, duh. They're going to do that through the app. You're going to, the ones you do in your app are going to go into your game. That's how they make this tie back and forth. And then eventually it all carries over to the Switch game. That's or the NX is mm-hmm. what we thought. Um, that didn't happen. Um, but I think that's the thing. Like they need to do something where, what you're doing on your phone ties back into what you're doing on your Switch. Because my Switch is now a portable console, but the phone, like, I'm not taking the Switch everywhere with me. Like, as easy as it is to throw in a bag and take somewhere with me, I'm still not doing it. My phone is always in my pocket. Yeah. Like, period. Like, the only time it's not in my pocket is when I'm sleeping. Or when I'm at home. It, even, even when I'm at home, home, it's like it's I there. I saw about that, yeah. Um, so this is always there, always ready to go. Yeah, I know we're talking about sales numbers and stuff, and I totally forgot MPD numbers also came out not too long ago mm-hmm. for March, and one Ghost Recon Wildlands, two Zelda Breath of the Wild, but there's something I'm actually going to say this too: three Mass Effect Andromeda, mm-hmm. but there's other two games besides Zelda don't have this little asterisk. Mm. Zelda has this little asterisk, and you look at the asterisk, there's no digital sales. Yeah. If that thing had digital sales, I actually think it would beat Wildlands. Probably. I mean, let's put it this way, right? If it's at number two for physical, you and I bought digital. Mark bought physical. So two, by that yeah. math, two out of three yeah. people buy digital, <laughs> Small which means... Small sample size. I could right. argue that, but okay. But we could, you could probably double, if not triple, the, the numbers reported there. So that's the thing about MPD. They never give numbers, so like you can't... I know. That's but like with I know Mass Effect came later in the month. Yeah. But it beat Mass Effect both just physical. Yeah. Online and that's the other thing, like 
I'm looking at this is going back to Sony now, but like Horizon and MLB, they come in four and five respectively. Yeah. Yeah. Both have asterisks though. No digital. No digital. Mm. So the one interesting thing is right there at number nine, near got in the top ten, which that is a. Did that come out in February? Uh no, March. March. Okay. February in Japan, but um, oh, yeah, yeah. but March here. And the weird thing about that is like. From the outside looking in, that's a weird game about a, a girl's butt. You know what I mean? Like, that's what I think most of the public is going to see. Some weird game where you run around as a girl and her butt hangs out. And, like, and it came it came up on top. And, like, for those M- unfamiliar MPD, like, you'll usually see, like, the new releases up top, which we're seeing now, here. And then you go to your bullshit, like, Grand Theft Auto, NBA, Call of Duty, Battle. Like, those are always in the top always, 10 for yeah. Near Automata, no, it doesn't beat Grand Theft Auto or NBA, but it did beat Call of Duty and it did beat Battlefield. Um, it bought Kingdom Hearts, which has a huge following of people. Yeah, um, Overwatch is also on his list. Like, yeah, Super Bomberman actually and made Super, it. On yeah, seventeen. It's pretty impressive. Once again, just just physical copies though. True. Like there, it beat FIFA. Like that always sells. Like I, I, that that's like crack to people. But yeah, like it, it switch software is moving. And it's impressive. There's something that's gonna make it even more impressive, which you'll learn about in a sec. I'm gonna read the last little bit here to close out uh, how they closed out their earnings yeah. call. Mm-hmm. It says during this period we will achieve strong results through three major initiatives: establishing Nintendo Switch, maintaining Nintendo 3DS momentum and continuing our smart device business. We will also push forward on our goal to expand the number of people who have access to Nintendo IP. They don't state here, but assuming that's the theme parks, hopefully some sort of uh, cartoons or whatever. Like, dude, I'm dying for a Splatoon Nickelodeon show. I Give it to that. me. Give I can so see that. Uh, then they close. Finally, the video game trade show E3 will be held in Los Angeles this June. Again, this year, we will not be hosting a large-scale press conference for institutional investors, analysts, and the media. Nintendo of America will present further information on our plans at a later date. So I assume we're still going to get the direct. um, It doesn't mean they won't be there, period. There's just no conference, which they've done the last few years. Right. Uh, Which I am real stoked about, and that should give us a little bit more of, you know. They're usually, what, Tuesday morning? Oh, yep, yep, yep. Um, one other thing that kind of came out was um, long, long, long time um, Nintendo employee, Genyo Takeda, uh, the current uh, technology fellow is what he's been called as of like 2015, retiring after 42 years of the company. Um, he'll be replaced by Ko Shioda, who is currently the executive officer and general manager of Platform Technology Development Division. Um, he'll become the new uh, Takeda. But Takeda famously was kind of like if Gunpei Yokoi was the first guy to start making hardware for Nintendo, uh, Takeda was the first guy to start making software. Uh, dude created Punch Out! And a bunch of other stuff, and he's been hanging around for a really long time. But he's yeah, on his way out. Some years, yeah. Yeah. Um, which is weird. It's weird that we're in that spot where like people are going to start to die or retire. Mm. Or I was very sad to see a lot of his name. I feel like I feel like you forget, but then you remember. Like, damn. Yeah, I know. The switch is like the ultimate culmination of everything he was doing, and it's like. He could have go out Jackie T style. I know. When I say Jackie T, I mean Jack Trenton of PlayStation. I know. Yep. Yeah. So um, you go out on top. Yeah. And then leave it to Andrew House. Old Andy. So yeah, E3 should be fun. Nintendo is doing okay. No surprise. Another free cheese podcast where we talk about Nintendo. Congrats. You made it through with us. Matt, you gonna buy a 2DS? No. What about a 3DS? No. Oh, okay. 
Uh, well, you got anything else show and tell wise? We never like properly intro to show and tell. But. No, uh, I think the the biggest thing I kind of forgot about. I'm glad I, you reminded me when we were talking about software sales was MPD. I did see that. Uh, yeah, th- I thought that that asterisk thing was very interesting. That Zelda could have on one platform outsold two big huge names. Um, yeah, and especially like on a platform that's so one new and two, we learn. I mean, under three million units in the wild. Compared I mean, to, that's also including Wii U copies, to be fair. It's sure. not all new, but it's the, probably the preferable place But to you play. know what? Like Combined between Wii U and Switch, you're looking at probably about 15 million units out there. <laughs> that's true. Right? Yeah, Against that's very true. the 100 plus or nearing 100 combined PS4, Xbox. And PC. And, oh, yeah. So we're over 100 million, right? It's, uh, I, don't, it's Mass, I don't think Mass Effect's PC, but I think Wildlands was. I don't, I don't remember. Um, or it could be. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, I say we close out on this. A uh, little comment on the news article about the 2DS XL. Uh, commenter writes, is Nintendo XL for fat people? Great question. Tune in next week to find Tune out the in, answer. Yeah, we'll, yeah, we'll find out next week. Um, yeah. I'm I'm happy. I'm feeling good. We're a few weeks out from E3. I feel like it's going to be a good time. I can't wait to own my stock in Nintendo so I can really be an asshole in a there show. You there you go. Oh, God. I don't know if I <laughs> want that Matt to show up. Could you imagine me as a shareholder? How would that affect the podcast? Are you? Would you be legally allowed to talk about things? Oh, I don't know. Yeah, you should think about that. Would you I, legally I would, be allowed to care, or would you be legally obliged to care? I think I'd be legally obliged to care, because hmm. my money's at stake. All, hmm. all two shares. That's an interesting point. At Thirty dollars, roughly. Right. Hmm. Well, we'll find out. Uh, one more thing before we do close out: we have a new cover story today. That's right. Yes. That would be the first tomorrow. This is the first right now. Yeah. Spring. Uh, yeah, I don't know why I'm doing these hands, but I'm doing some hands. Well, I guess I'm, I'm imitating yeah, the cover you, image. You got yeah, it, yeah. The little sprout. That's what I was laughing at. Uh, so Spring is out. Spring is a really interesting cover story for us. Um, we've been doing these one-word cover stories, and they're all kind of evocative of something. And Spring, when you hear that, like you think of a lot of different things. You think of different colors, images, scenery. You might think of, you know, literal springs as, you know, some of us did when we were talking internally, right? Arms right around the corner. Um, For us, spring is one, a study of color in games, but two, kind of looking into the idea of what spring means. So spring in nature is usually the time of growth, of expansion, of change, of something new. Rebirth. Right. Rebirth. Like that old ideas becoming new again by way of dying through the winter and coming out the other side. So for us this whole month, we're going to focus on looking at how color can dictate mood and kind of reflect those ideas within games. I think it's going to be an interesting cover story to tackle. We have some cool content planned. This is probably the most like feature heavy month we've had in a really long time Uh, to be totally transparent. I think that we've kind of, Cover stories are something we've been doing for a while now, but really in the last year is when we've doubled down on them as mm. an idea and something that we stay consistent with. Um, but I feel like this is the one I feel strongest about in a long time. Like we've had really good cover stories, but this one feels like it's like the next level. Like yeah. this is, and we got some good stuff planned. Uh, yeah, like retros and features and stuff like this that. Is this is the near automata. You know what I mean? Where you don't uh, even. Yeah, I know, you I know exactly what you mean. I know yep. you do. You don't realize that it's there until like this will be the one where we look back and we realize this is the month that everything. And then BBA changed. pops out and yeah. N- wrong. No. Mm. <laughs> oh, sorry. The the steak sauce. There you go. They won. You got it. You got it. Uh, but yeah, I feel good about this one. So join us for May. Go to the site, read the cover story. Um, and keep your eyes out because there's content attached to it on the way. It's a coming. It's a coming. Um, with that, thefreecheese.com. Go to there, read stuff, look at stuff, watch stuff. Um, we have a now playing Puyo Puyo Tetris just went live last week. Um, Injustice coming through. It, it's happening. 
we're only a few chapters away from the end. Yeah. Um, we did the Flash last week. Wonder Woman will drop this week. Mm. I know. You'll do. You, yeah, if you watch, you'll know why I'm groaning. I know. I know. Why am I losing my voice all of a sudden? Am I screaming? A lot of talking. It is a lot of talking. Two hours talking. Maybe you're carrying me through this podcast. Maybe that's what's happening. I feel like we've been balanced. I'll go back and look at the waveforms and make sure, but... Oh, no, not that I care, but maybe that's why. Mm, maybe. There's a lot of me, but I talk a lot anyway. I'm an asshole. You're the host. That's fine. It, I come here. I make fun of Nintendo. It's true. It, it lets me vent for the week. <laughs> and then... Yeah. I'm ready. I'm ready for tomorrow. Tomorrow. That's today. Today is next week. E3 is just a day away. Crash, three days away. God damn it, I hate everything. If you want to follow us on Twitter, the free cheese is at some free cheese. Matt is at MattyIce131. I am at the free cheese. We're also on Instagram, YouTube, Tumblr, uh, Google Plus. If that's something that you do. If you don't follow me already, now probably not the right time this week. It's probably going to be a lot of depression t- tweets as the Capitals get eliminated from the playoffs because that's probably what's going to happen. Mm. Uh, next week, though. <laughs> Is it, when, when's this series over? Before we record or after? So it, it depends. If the Capitals decide to start winning, we right. will still be alive come podcast time. Okay. Uh, if not, when I'm not here on Sunday because I've dropped off the face of the earth. Got it, got it, got it. That makes sense. Very good. Well, with that, that's uh, the Free Cheese episode 195. A few more weeks away from E3. A few more weeks away from episode 200. So stay oh, yeah. tuned. And go to thefreecheese.com. Check out this month's cover story, Spring. Thanks, Matt. Thank you. Thanks, listener. We'll see you next week. Bye. <laughs>